Man. Hey there. Oh, jeez. Empty chair. Whoa. How are you? Hey, my kids are great. Thanks for asking. Uh-huh. <laughs> Five kids? Whoa! <gasps> wow. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Terry Free not here this morning. Not gonna be here. Had to fly back to Eastern Washington for a family emergency. Stephen, is that mm-hmm. the deal? Yeah, that's the mm-hmm. deal. Mm-hmm. Her mom's not doing well. That's what it sounds like. Can we talk about this? I know. Should we ask Terry? She's not here. Not here. No. Mm-mm. Is it something you think she would let us talk about? I'm pretty sure. No. I, All right. I never mind know. then. Forget that, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone's fine. What's the deal on that? What do you think? Mr. Dead, not doing it. Oh, <laughs> It's really not important for a segment, but anyway. But how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah? You? I'm doing all right. Worried about Terry. Yeah. Her dad passed away, what, about two years ago? A year and a half ago? What? About two, two years, years ago. ago, I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then she had twins. Just to recap. <laughs> this is Terry's life. Yeah, that's right. Okay. We, have and, to go, we have to go way back, back into time. And now, easy, please. And now her mom is not doing well. And some people say in order to bring new people into the world, others must check out, unfortunately. And maybe she was doing owing. I, I, I don't want to speculate. She did have two kids. But anyway. Um, all right. So Terry's not going to be here today. That's the deal, right? Yes. All right. So does that mean Stephen reads stories? Looks like. That means, ladies and gentlemen, we're pretty much without stories this morning from Terry. So... Uh, <laughs> We're obviously going to depend on you, the listeners, with your text pages and your phone calls. So it should be a fascinating day. Also, at some point today, I believe the uh, the young lady who won Strapprentis is going to be uh, coming in because her show begins tomorrow m- evening. It's the Strip Prentice. That's Lurk. right. Starring the Strip Prentice. Learn. Mm-hmm. We're not doing that anymore. Howdy. Not, not this year. Shut the hell up and go play with yourself. And that could be the first segment of tomorrow's show. Who knows? <laughs> wonder if she's nervous. Well, we'll find out, Stephen. She'll be coming down. wonder if she's excited. Oh, we'll find out, Stephen. <laughs> because she's coming down. I wonder if she hates Stephen. <laughs> oh, she doesn't have to come down for that. Okay. <laughs> we already know. Mm-hmm. You don't want me scouring through Cosmo getting articles for you? If you want to scour through Cosmo... Oh, geez. Be my guest. You want to find articles? Terrific. I do it now. Yeah, right. It's a good stripper show night because, you know, it's fall back night. Do the whole clock. That's thing. right. We get an hour back this weekend. Nice. Very important now. That hour's crucial. We should have an hour back every weekend. That would be great. Man. <laughs> One hour a year obviously just ain't cutting it. Nope. He needs to get an hour back like every other day. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, how much sleep do we need to catch up on? A hell of a lot more than an hour. Love it. Yes. Last call. Not uh-huh. yet, Apple. Jerk off. It's, uh, one this, more hour. This hour doesn't count. Yeah. It's like it never happened. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it's a fallback weekend, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And a Halloween weekend. A lot of things going on. Check it, The T Man. Clearly, Ashley Simpson's fans are over the lip sync fiasco from Saturday Night Live. Her new album, I Am Me, is number one. It's first week out. Mm hmm. I Am Me. There it is, number one. I don't know. I don't remember hearing any of her singles on the on the radio over the past month or so. Has she got anything out, Steve? Has she got a single out? There is a single, yeah. And I just don't realize it's her or what? Am uh, I liking it? Am I, like, singing it in my car? Uh, probably it. not, you know. Yeah. Well, why don't you give us a couple of a couple of bars and a couple of steps? What do you... What do you have as far as the Ashley single, uh, Ashley Simpson single that's been released? Well, what what has she got out there? Uh, well, I'm looking for it. I don't know if we have it or not. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, can't, I don't know. It's called Boyfriend, though. I know that. That's good. Is it a hit? Uh, it's no, uh, no. Oh, jeez. I mean, it's okay. It's yeah, well, average. Like, is it a remake of the Pebbles one? Oh, jeez. <laughs> the album. Girlfriend. The album's number one. <laughs> yeah. Is there just nothing up against it, or what? Is there any other album out there? Kanye West is still floating around, but uh, it's been around for about a month or so now, if, at least. So is there anything else up against it? Is it just number one by default, or what? I think it might have been number one by default. Oh. There's only a new thing out. There isn't a new thing no, out. there wasn't anything new out. I looked yesterday. So, yes, technically she's got the number one album, but when you're up against what? Well, yeah. John John could have had it out. John John's greatest hits. Right. <laughs> not saying much. No. Hmm. On the weekend, we're pasty days excited to go with his parents to see the Rolling Stones. 
Oh, wow. That's Fossils fun. that rock at the Key <laughs> Arena. I think they were number two, actually. If that's how they're uh, promoting it. If they're not, well, that's how they should be. Fossils that rock. It's Paul McCartney next week. Jeez. It's the Rolling Stones this week. And you couldn't get any more people in the Key Arena for both events. We thought they'd never be fossils, and here they are. Yeah, and if, you're, if your parents are just so excited to see the Rolling Stones, let them know that the earplugs will be necessary because Motley Crue's opening for them, if that oh, makes wow. any sense. Oh, man. Does that make any sense? No. Is that true? Motley yeah. Crue is opening for the Rolling wow. Stones this weekend. Is that this weekend? Uh, yes. That's tonight or tomorrow night, isn't it? Because I know Tommy Lee's making an appearance at Club Medusa, so obviously his finances are in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Rolling Stones Sunday. Uh-huh. And Sunday night, that's when Tommy Lee's going to be at Club Medusa. Right after the show. Yes. He's going to be a go-go girl. Pacey's parents are going to love Shout at the Devil. They probably never heard it. They're going to love it. Ah, the Pacey parents, the fossils that rock, huh? I can guarantee you they've never heard it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a for sure. There's no yes. way. They probably even know who Montley Crew is. And you're excited for them? You feel good? Like you're excited for their big weekend? It's not yeah. only a Halloween weekend. It's huh. not only a Breeders' Cup weekend. It's not only a Push the Clock Back weekend. It's a Fossils That Rock weekend for your parents. I'm kind of proud of them for going and rocking out. Really? You're yeah. proud of them for getting out and going to... Do the old Rolling Stones thing. They're not a big rock show. Well, I don't know. Rolling Stones are really a hard, just a, you call them a rock show even at this point. They put on a good show, I guess, at their age. It's Is it a rock show? It's not Simon and Garfunkel, so yeah, it's a rock show. (sighs) So are they going to get high before they go? Oh, Oh, man. At Pacey's apartment. (laughs) If uh, if you're talking about contact, they should be... High in the first few minutes in the door of Pacey's apartment to pick him up. Hey, Conveniently uh, located near the near the venue. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. Hey Pacey, it's, your, it's uh, the mogul here. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're coming over. Is that cool? <laughs> okay, so that's very exciting. So the whole family's going together. A weekend extravaganza. Yes, it's it's a prelude to their Hawaii trip next <laughs> month. The family that sticks together. Flies together. Oh, geez. <laughs> is Sissy coming to the show too? Oh, man. Uh, Sissy will not be coming to the show. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, she's kind of uh, on the outs, huh? She's not even going to Hawaii, is she? Uh, no, 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 she'll be going to Hawaii. Oh, oh no, <laughs> you <laughs> made sure of that, Stephen. Yes. Or she didn't go to New Orleans with you, or something Correct. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Since you don't go, I don't go. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she'll be there. Pasty's fantasizing about putting some lotion on her bag <laughs> in Hawaii already. Hey, trying this coconut bra. Yeah, but she's not going <laughs> to the Rolling Stones. No. Uh huh. She's not pre-fucking for Hawaii at uh, the Key Arena. No. no when do you not. when do you all leave as a family for Hawaii? Oh, I want to say it's like the 16th or something. Like you don't have a circle on the calendar. Come on. It's, when do you all... 16th of, the, of November? It's the Friday before Thanksgiving week. Mm-hmm. So. So, do you think, so are you taking the week off? He's taking the week off. Oh, wow. He's taking the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday before Thanksgiving off. He asked me for that about six months ago. And I said? laughed my ass off about <laughs> another family vacation. <laughs> And then because I laughed so hard, I couldn't say no. So, nice yes. It'll be the 18th we take off. Uh-huh. So you think if you were to ask Sissy about this, she'd be like, oh, i got to go to another stupid vacation no. with my parents. She's probably just as excited as Pasty. Wow. She's excited. She's, uh-huh. she's looking forward to it. I mean, you can't knock free, relatively free trips, though. I mean, that's pretty yeah, you cool. Can. Yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> there comes this. a point in a person's life where you're too old to go on family vacations, even if you're pay- your family's paying for it. Right. It's ridiculous. It's it's absurd. Unless they brought Pasty and his wife. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, that's different. That's the point. <laughs> but Pasty rooms with his sister like they were 14 Jeez. and 12. He can for anybody else. <laughs> like they were 14 and 12 years old. That should be the last stage. Maybe you go 15, 16. Tops. After 16, your parents go on vacation. You stay home and trash the house. I agree. The uncomfortableness of Pasty and his sister getting ready in the bathroom together in the oh, hotel room. Uh-huh. Hey, can you get my zipper, please, Dave? You don't need that. <laughs> Do you need that, Pasty? Is that what you're looking forward to? <laughs> getting your sister's makeup bag for it? Is. I don't know. It's not that or, bad. or getting your makeup bag for it? It's not like I'm fetching her stuff for her. Well, uh, you know, you're in the same room together. You guys are going to be fetching stuff for each other. That's the way it works when you're in the same room. We're sharing Husband a Husband do that for wives, and if you're a 28-year-old man, you do that for your 26-year-old sister. She can get her own bag. Uh-huh. Walk, walk into the bathroom with a tall boy in the morning. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, she don't mind me. <laughs> or like she won't see the, the magnum under the towel oh. <laughs> after you get out of the shower. Oh, I dropped it. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Let me drop it again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Terry Free, not with us today, as you'll hear about for pretty much the entire show. She uh, had to take an emergency flight to eastern Washington, and we're all thinking about her and emails to her at this time, considering she lost her dad a year and a half ago, and now her mom is in uh, a tough situation. Well, would, I'm sure, be appreciated by her, that you're rallying around for her. 
but we also uh, don't have our stories this morning. So here's the deal. We either have kill breath stories or we take a lot of phone calls today. So I'm going to open the phone lines early. How often do I give people who listen early a chance to phone in say what's going on? Never. Not too often. I didn't even know the phone lines could open this Well, way. they can. I just have never opened them really this early, but now they're open. They just, they just got open. It doesn't take much. Yeah. Hmm? But uh, with that said, Stephen, if you have a story just to give us an idea of what they may sound like, hmm. Then we'll line up the calls at, uh, of course, the phone number is one eight six 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 three t man There you go. Give it once. You should know it by now. Bing, bang, boom. Kill Breath and his stories. Go ahead. Well, you may have heard of Brandy. one eight six 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 three t man No, go ahead. I'm sorry, Steve. Of uh, the singer Brandy? Yes. All right. Now all the phone lines are filling up, Stephen, really quick. Oh, good. So uh, we don't need you anymore. Okay. Oh, it is. No, go ahead. Uh, superstar singer Brandy has ended her uh, 15-month engagement to the uh, Quentin Richardson of the New York Knickerbockers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And uh, you may recall that uh, she has a $1 million engagement ring from him that she got last summer. She pretty much just did that to make Kobe upset or what? Probably. Started going out the queue? Yep. She can't make anything work. She is only into NBA basketball players, is that it? Well, the guy that knocked her up was her producer. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He was in there somewhere. All right. But he played a good game of pickup at least, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. He was like 6'10". <laughs> All right. It should have been in the NBA. Mm-hmm. I just want to see Pacey's parents' face back to that when Molly Crew comes out and they have little tiny midgets and bikinis coming out on stage on leashes. You don't want to get past that, do you? <laughs> uh, honey, the, where's Mick Jagger? Oh, geez. You're on the air. Hello. God. Hello? Oh, tell me the phones aren't working this morning and I'll be just ready to... Is there something not pushed here? No. Hmm? The tea here? What's the deal? You're on the air. Hello. I got breaking news this morning, Steven. Steven is still a dickhead. Oh, jeez. That's nice. That's a way to encourage him when he's going to be much needed this morning as a story reader. Don't let that get to you, Steven. No, it doesn't. All right. You're on the air. Hello. Hello? Yes, Ray. Go ahead. Is this Ray? What's going on? Yeah, this What's is What's up, Ray? What kind of phone is this? Uh, it's a cordless phone, man. It is. Well, maybe it's time to invest in a new one. Get a cord, maybe. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Put the cord back in. Yeah, they have cordless kind that you don't have to pull the antenna out anymore. <laughs> Go ahead, Ray. What's up? Ray can't hear us. No. All right. Uh-huh. Mark! It's your turn. Hello. Yeah, this is Mark from Tacoma. Yes, Mark. Steven is still a dickhead, and we do not need to hear his stories this morning. Well, it's either that or phone calls like you, Mark, because Terry's not here. What are we going to do? Maybe you should get some hot little chick to come down there and read stories for her. Mm-hmm. Well, if we had known that uh, Terry was going to be out, it was an emergency having to fly over to Eastern Washington late last night, mm-hmm. maybe we would have. We do have the, the co-host wheel, right, still somewhere? <laughs> the co-host wheel. I'd hate to have to spin it knowing yeah. Terry's mom was really sick. That would be really insensitive. But if Terry's going to be out on Monday, well, we do have the big Halloween extravaganza on the Hershey Highway deal oh, on yeah. Monday. You're on the year. Let's go to Jared. Hello. Hello? Jared, you're on. Jared, Hello? Jared, turn down your radio. Okay. All the way down, Jared. All right. Okay, what's up, bud? Uh, my wife's a whore. Your wife's a whore? Jared? Yeah. Is that it? That's all you want to say? That's it. That's all I got. You want to explain why you've come to this conclusion about your wife? She's with, she sleeps with everybody. Mm-hmm. Me. You're not even married, are you, Jared? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're not? What? You're not even married, are you? Well, I am. How long have you been married? Uh, about three months. Three months? Oh, three months. Yeah. Newlyweds. Really mm-hmm. What was the date of your wedding, Jared? Uh, July 27th. July 27th. What day of the week was that, Jared? Not a midweek. I yeah, think. not a weekend. What day of the week was that, Jared? It was a weekday. What day? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'd know the day you married the whore. Right. Jared. What a nice Wednesday afternoon for you. Jared! And you're wondering why I opened the phones early every morning. <laughs> people are still on their way home. Right. Yeah, that's the people you get. Yeah. When you open the phone lines this early, you don't get people uh, on their way to work no. yet. You get people on their way home from last night's activities. Scott, West Seattle, go. <laughs> Hey, T-Man. Yes. I'd like to hear about the fearless forecaster this morning. 
What do you All want right. to hear? His prediction on the, the the Rolling Stones or what? Now the prediction on the Seahawks. What do you think their chances are of uh, how fast Pasty's parents pass out at the Key Arena when they see the little midget <laughs> squad stage with Molly Crew or what? <laughs> No, I'm the Seahawks aren't even playing this weekend. They have a bye. That's, That's a right. bye. That's all right, though. we got to get excited about the Seahawks. They're going to go to the Super Bowl. We're excited. <laughs> Don't get overly excited to go to the Super Bowl. Not, Not so fast. They're 5-2. What do you think about the Fearless Forecaster? What's your prediction? I think the Fearless Forecaster is awesome. Thank you for the call. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about him? Yeah. I think he's uh, unbelievably capable. It, 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 Unbelievable statistics as far as him being able to pick games. It's remarkable. You've liked him for some time. I now. really am close with the Felix Forecaster. So if you're going to ask me what my feelings are on the Felix Forecaster, that's that's them right there. The man's amazing. Is he coming over for Thanksgiving again? Now the Seahawks, I'm not getting carried away just yet. I'm excited. I'm enjoying it like everyone else. But to start buying your plane tickets, making your reservations... So make sure you're in the room next to the Pasty family at uh, wherever the Super Bowl is going to be this year. I believe it's Detroit. Who wants to go to Detroit for the, in the first place? Second of all, I'm not so certain that the Seahawks have stamped their ticket for the Super Bowl just yet. All right? Yeah, got a lot of the season left to go. We, we, thanks for the point. We've uh, we've been in this situation before. The Seahawks have gotten off to great starts in the past. This isn't the first time. I knew eight and two a few years ago. Late November, let's talk. Early December, let's talk. Matt, hello. Ron, hello. It's <laughs> the best call. Yes, Ron. Huh? Sean, hello. Hey, T man. What's up, Sean? How, are you doing? How are you, Sean? I'm all right. Uh huh. Hey, I just uh, I just wanted to say that it's unfortunate that Terry's gone, but it's kind of nice not to have that bond around once in a while. Oh, jeez. Well, she and, uh, should be I back Monday. Her, her mom's really sick, so uh, you might want to be a little nicer with your thoughts today. Well, yeah, that's too bad. That's unfortunate. Uh-huh. But I think I think Stephen will do a great job. Oh. I don't think he, I don't think he's a dickhead like everyone says. Oh, geez. Wow. So, why do I feel like something's yeah. being set up here? Where's the punchline? Yes. What do you feel, Sean? Oh, about Stephen? Yes. I think you do a great job. Oh, well, thank, thank you very much. That's wow. Nice. It was yeah, a common to face to be taken at face value. He's underrated. Wow. wow. Kill breath and underrated a radio guy. Well, that's right. Yeah. It's very humbling. Stephen, you. you were you were right all along, apparently. <laughs> Sean is. Oh, you, you guys have a wonderful day. Sean has got it all figured out there, Stephen. Only what's a, that? A white chip prospect. Mm-hmm. Sean, what are you wearing? Oh, just... <laughs> Jason. Good morning. Actually, turkey Hi. chip prospect. <laughs> Hello, Jason. Hello. What do you got, bud? Uh, I was just wondering if I can get some relationship advice. Of course you can. All right. But first, you have uh, to be in a relationship. But thanks for the call, Jason. <laughs> Okay, no, go ahead. Uh, well, I'm a 20-year-old male. I'm going to uh, college soon, and I've been going out with a girl for about a year and a half. And you're 20 years old, and you're going to college soon? Yeah, well, I'm going to be transferring. All right. Have you started any kind of college year kind of situation, or what? Yeah, I went to UW for a quarter, and then I transferred to BCC just because it was so expensive. Right, because that's the logical next step from UW is to go to BCC. Yeah, UW's easy. UW's a stepping stone to uh, Bellevue Community College. I need some more challenging work. Why would you go from UW to BCC? Because you couldn't handle the work, you weren't happy. What's the deal? Oh, no, it's, it's, I can't afford it. Like, yeah, I'm taking my own, my own way through college, and I just can't afford, like, the 25000 a year tuition. It's probably so. the best excuse you could have could, uh, come up with. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the girls suck there. <laughs> I'm going to Bellevue. you. Well, actually. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> All right, so uh, what do you want to do now? Well, we're both going to be transferring up to uh, Belling- or the uh, Western College up in Bellingham. All right. And I was just wondering, do you think it's a... Uh, well, she really wants to stay together. Yeah, sounds but a little too... Half of me wants to kind of, you know, stay with her, but half the other half wants to get out. <laughs> he split right down the middle. The top uh, half or the bottom half? Mm-hmm. Jeez. Uh, so part of you wants to have some freedom when you go uh, to your next little spot for school. And right. that, that's going to be where, you say? Bellingham? Yeah, Western. Yeah. Is there anything going on as far as girls there? Uh, Birkenstocks. Mm-hmm. Probably underarm hair. You like the granola <laughs> girls or what? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I've been up there. I've partied up there. They got a few, you know, good, 
good set of good looking girls. I would hold on to your girlfriend until you get up there and scope it out. Okay. I would hold on to your girlfriend. I mean, how many times do I mean? I remember so many of my friends saying, "Yeah, I'm just hanging around with her until I find something better." I mean, there's nothing okay. wrong with that. That's the okay. way it is. Girls do that with guys. <laughs> All right. Stay with her. Go to this. Go to uh, what school is it again? Western. Western, and just hang out there until something better comes along, and until it's been great, and give her walking papers. Okay. Yeah, as insensitive right. as that sounds, I mean, we got to look out for you. You're the one calling. If she was on the line, I'd tell her that you're a heartless bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not talking to her, am I? No. No. I'm talking to you, the heartless bastard. <laughs> but it's okay. Right. To, it's okay to be one at twenty years old. All right. All but right. before you break up with her, when you when you get in this situation where you think you found something better, make sure that this granola girl is on the same page, if you know what I mean. Make sure you uh, have secured the guarantee that you're going to be able to get some serious action from her, all right? All right. And then if you want to try to juggle them both, that's even better. Okay. All right? And then get a right, third. Thank you. Yeah, then get a third. Oh. Heartless yep. freaking bastard. Yep, and I also want to say, he's not that bad of a guy. Oh, he's not that, not that bad of a guy. Wow, well, thank you. The opinions of Kilbreth are coming in quick this morning. Fruity little bastards from Western, uh -huh. like Stephen. <laughs> yes. That should make sense. one 663 t man the number to call. The T-Man. That innocent-looking iPod is sending some parents on the warpath tonight. That's because the nifty music machine that plays MP3s yeah. and some television shows right. can now play porn. Ow! The pornographers are offering their wares for download on the devices. Mm -hmm. Technology experts say it's up to parents to either avoid giving their kids iPods or get their kids to let them inspect them regularly. Right. <laughs> parents are going to rip away their kids' iPods if they have uh, porn playing on it. That's the way you got to parent. You got to be on top of that. Kid will yell back at you. Give me back my iCock. I mean, my iPod. Give me back. <laughs> but uh, you as a responsible parent must be on top of that. In the meantime, I'll watch all the porn and get my hands on. There it is on your iPod. It's such a small screen, though. Can't see small it. screen, big dicks. Oh, wow. Yeah, not that I'm into that part. But, uh, it's the yeah. new slogan. That's probably going to be the new slogan, yes. <laughs> right. More the reason not to get the Nano. You need as big a screen, I guess, as you can get. But it'll still be a small screen, but it'll be right there in the pocket of your uh, palm of your hand. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, it will be. Come on. Yes, it will. <laughs> and then you'll have the iPod in your other hand. Right. <laughs> the iPod. You ready for Devin Lane on your iPod? You ready for uh, Kira Kenner? Oh, she's only been around about three years, but made a big splash in my life. Yes. You're looking like you don't even know who she is. I, I don't really watch porn stars. I know. Say. You like to watch, like, Harry Housewives and more amateurish yeah, porn. Yeah, I'm more into that. Yes. Much more into the amateurish porn. I like the pros. Not me. Bring them on. How many girls I can get? Mm-hmm. How like, many girls I'll never be able like, to get? Like the Harry Housewife? Harry Housewife. Yes, Housewife. exactly. The Harry Housewife you can get? I just talked to her. She's not interested in you. Oh, oh damn. You might as well go big time porn. All right. <sighs> wow. You excited about this, Stephen? Yeah, it sounds good. You can download your... Favorite porno on your iPod? Make it happen. Go about your day. Sit on the bus with some more entertainment than ever before. Well, you think they'd have the um, you know ability to block being able to download the stuff off the internet in the first place? Well, I'm sure there'll be some parental controls if that's what you're worried about for young Benjamin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you decided that Benjamin is the name? Is that a hundred percent now? I wouldn't say a hundred percent, but it's uh, it's close. All right. Well, when will you know? I mean, you're about a month or two away from having your first child. You right. said on the air his name is going to be Benjamin. Now you're kind of going back on it? Or well, what? no, I'm not going back on it. I mean, I think that's that's most likely what it's going to be. But mm -hmm. if it, you know, it comes out, say, a girl or something, then we would probably have to well, change you, the name. Well, you checked, and they said it's going to be a boy. They're yeah, pretty, but they're never 100% sure. Well, it's as close as you're ever going to get. Right. So you should feel, you shouldn't be thinking that all of a sudden it's going to pop out as a girl. So if it's a boy, well, you're saying stories, it's been, oh, I've heard Lord. stories from people that have said they have were told that it was going to be a boy, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden... No, that's that's later in life. Marge thinks Stephen may be a girl now. <laughs> right. There's Not always a, a story for every situation, Stephen. So you're saying if it's a boy, it's Ben? Yes. Big Ben? Big Ben. Oh, and if it's a girl, Big Ben. Oh, it's a girl, it's Ben of her. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. There it is. Big Ben. Got your porn on iPod. You got a name for Kilbreth's child. All in one segment. Yeah, big day. Mm -hmm. It's a big day. Absolutely. I'd be watching my movie, then hit like, come on, Eileen, on accident. Oh, wait a minute. Ow! Big day, heading into a big weekend. The pasty parents and pasty Dave. Going to be uh, going to the Rolling Stones and 
I'm still, <laughs> I'm still loving I the fact that I, I, I don't see how the promoter of this of this concert says, "Oh yeah, we got to have Motley Crue open for him." Yeah, it's a perfect weird. fit. The, the audiences, the crowds that go to Motley Crue, don't cross over with Rolling Stone old fans. No, it's bizarre. It should be like John Mayer or something like that. Pasty's dad is going to be sitting there. It's what, 55, 60 years old? How old is your dad? 55, yeah. How old is he really? Um, 65? No, he's not that old. He's either 54 or 55. That's it? Yeah. All right. Still, all of a sudden, Too old he, for the crew. he's expecting to see the Rolling Stones. He gets there a little earlier than he thought. <laughs> 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 Isn't Keith Richards back there or something? <laughs> I don't know. They sell earplugs? Can I explain this to them? <laughs> I don't think I could. They'll definitely be there early because they're older. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody will be there early. Everybody oh, yeah. will be in their seat ready to go. <laughs> yeah. At six. <laughs> I mean, I know on the Rolling Stones tour they actually had Pearl Jam open for them one night, but that to me even makes more sense than Motley Crue. A little more, yeah. They got people 55, 60 years old holding their ears to this. Yeah, I don't get it. Play Shout at the Devil! <laughs> right, don't be responsible. Your parents ready for this there, Pasty? No way in hell. Now I want to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leave after the crew. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Interesting selection by the promoter. Paid $280 just to see Motley Crue. Mm-hmm. Amazing. One eight six 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 three T Man's the number to call. Audrey has dialed in. What's going on? What's up? How are you? I'm good. I'm tired. All right. Well, <laughs> hopefully that'll pass. Tends yeah. to do that in the course of a day, especially with coffee. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Mm hmm. So yes. I went to Western. All right. And I'm not a granola head. Okay. So that guy who's moving up there, he should know there's a lot of girls up there. Well, you got to know that that's probably the uh, the consensus as far as the thoughts are concerned on Western. Maybe there's some other girls that aren't granolish, but how how many people go to that school? About five thousand? Maybe eight or ten. Oh, yeah, more than there. that, really? Yeah. More than five? Yeah, no, that's a big that's school. That's a pretty big school. I mean, compared to the school I went to. But anyway, so when you got ten thousand people at a school, there's got to be a lot of different types. But. The overall tone of your school is that it's granola, Birkenstock wearing, <laughs> love to go to James Taylor kind of ladies. Evergreen North. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I doubt that you're that far from the uh, from the general stereotype. It's a stereotype. That's all it is. Well, I'm sure you're pretty much dead on from what I'm hearing from you. All right? So don't fight right. it. Embrace it. <laughs> okay. Go braid your armpit hair. Mm -hmm. Shut up. It's already braided, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Not really. A Rodney from Shoreline. Go. Hey, how you doing, P man? All right, sir. What's up? Uh, just call to let y'all know that we're gonna keep Terry Free Mom in our prayers. You know, okay. she's a good asset to the show. Terry Free, Terry Free's mom. Yeah. Yes, her regular Friday appearances on the show are right, yeah. much needed. How yeah. She's your sidekick, man. So, oh, Terry. You know, yeah, Terry's a good asset to the show. I don't doubt that, but you said keep Terry's mom in our prayers because she's a good asset to the show. Yeah. Well, Terry's mom has never been on the show. Well, Terry Free Mom in our prayer because Terry Free's a good asset. There guy. it is. <laughs> yes. Now we got it. Yeah. Believe me, you can't misspeak on this show, man, or they'll tell they'll they'll hey, catch you. That's why I'm at work. I just got to work. I so. just want people to say what they're saying. Is that too much to ask? You knew what he wanted well, to say. I knew what he and we, we got to really it, didn't Terry we, Stephen? Terry Free's mom on the show. Terry, okay, that's what he was really saying. He wants Terry Free's mom to have a feature on the show. Well, she's in intensive care right now, so I think keeping her in our prayers is more accurate at this point. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay, but I think that's very nice of you to say. Thanks. So thanks for making that call from work to give us those thoughts. Yeah, he just wants to hit on Terry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell her to call me. I want to pray for her. Terry had to make an emergency flight to Eastern Washington uh, yesterday evening, and her mom is uh, trying to pull through, but uh, who knows? Maybe it's time for her mom, who's 86 years old, right. to join her dad, who passed away a year and a half ago. You hear, and I find them very romantic stories, by the way. When an old couple who's lived a lifetime together, one of them dies, the other one, within a 
short period of time, passes themselves from a broken heart. Well, my mom's parents died within several months of each other. And they skip together down Heavenly Lane. It's a, almost a nice story, isn't it? It's like the notebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not that I've seen it. I haven't Don't either, <laughs> but I, I know it's right. Dead on to the notebook. Yes, it is. Because I, I haven't. Thinking about I it. haven't seen it about six times. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're on the air. I've never. Cried I can't that movie. help but see it. My wife watches it every day. It's great. Oh, it's a good movie. It's insanity. Don. Hey, what's up, you man? What's up, Donald? I'm chilling, man. Hey, I I just want to address the fact about the Seattle people and their and their Seahawks, man. All right. I, I, I know you're from New York. And I got a couple questions for you well, about that. Well, I've been that. in Seattle 10 years now, so okay, go ahead, yes. I, I'm going to ask, how long did it take you to conform to the Seattleites? I mean, I'm from Philadelphia, I'm a diehard Philadelphia fan, and I can't ever see myself being a Seahawks fan. Well, I became a Seahawks fan quicker than I would have ordinarily because in uh, 1997, two years after I moved here, I was living uh, a few doors down from someone who went on to become one of my best friends in the world who was a Seahawk. So that uh, got me to become a Seahawks fan quicker than I would have ordinarily, if that means anything to you, all right? Yeah, I just, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I'm not saying I'm resisting, but any little thing any Seahawks or Seattle team does, Seattle seems to blow it up, and then they get let yeah, down every a, year. If you heard the previous caller that he's obviously referring to, this guy is already buying his trip to Detroit. He's putting the Seahawks in the Super Bowl already. Come on. You, I've been here long enough to know that uh, we've been here a little bit before where we got a little optimistic and it could fade really quick. Not that the Seahawks look like they're in a fading position this year because they could pretty much lose the rest of their games and still win the NFC West. There's like nobody to challenge them in their own division. So they're going to the playoffs. But when they get to the playoffs, they're going to be some nice teams ready for them. So putting them in the Super Bowl already... A little bit too early. Isn't that part of being a fan, though? I mean, you get excited about that kind of stuff? If you want to be a fan that just is setting yourself up for major disappointment, sure. Well, I mean, you're... Like being a Seahawks fan. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, every, every, every team is... You're set up for major disappointment except one team. Well, it depends how you look at it. Some teams are just happy to make the playoffs. It seems like the way the fans are setting themselves up for this season, they won't be happy unless the Seahawks make or win the Super Bowl. And to, to already put that as a guarantee in your mind is setting yourself up for perhaps a lot of heartache. Now, maybe heartache's part of uh, being a fan, and that's, well, I don't know. I don't need any extra heartache if I can uh, avoid it. <laughs> yeah. I booked my room for Detroit during the break. You want to share it with me? Yeah, but okay, good. <laughs> whatever it costs, doesn't matter. <laughs> Scott! Hey, man. What's up? Not much. What's up with you? What could I do for you, Scott? Well, you know, it's Terry Freeze gone, and there's no Filipino voice there, and I just wanted to throw in my Filipino voice. Right, so sexy. So, I just want to say, hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was the Fil official Filipino voice yes. of the Filipino. There you go, our Filipino quota has been filled for the day. Wow. Oh, yeah. Because Scott has, uh, <laughs> has joined us. Mm -hmm. Give us a woohoo. I, I want to say something else, too. Uh, that was pretty cool when Delilah was there. Right. Uh, so it was pretty awesome about that. Yes. Know. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, the good, the bad, and, you know, obviously, Scott the ugly. Mm. <laughs> All righty. All right, so Scott. You guys take care, okay? There it is. Is he calling himself ugly, or? I don't know. I think it really needs to be explored. one uh, 663 t man You can tell uh, this is going to be a big call day. <laughs> and anyone with any thoughts whatsoever. Right. <laughs> uh, Delilah's nice. Are going to make it in. Crystal. But I love taking a lot of calls on a Friday. Or any day. And you're on, Crystal. All right. What's up? Hello? Yes. Hey, how's it going? Ah! Ah! How old are you, Crystal? I'm 18. Oh. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. What can we do for you? Um, I just had a quick question. Um, I'm kind of seeing this guy, right? Mm -hmm. And he's got this crazy... I thought... Oh. What? Huh? Huh? Yes, yeah, he's got this crazy what? Ex girlfriend? Crazy, yes. Yes. How how old is your boyfriend or this guy you're seeing? Same age. Eighteen. He's I got know. a crazy ex girlfriend at eighteen. Yeah. How crazy can she be? The violent type or just the annoying type no, or what? She just yells for no reason. The needy type. She she yells for no reason. You're yeah. like hanging out with him, your new kind of boyfriend, and he just yeah. comes up and starts going ah. <laughs> what does she do? What do you mean she yells? No, she's just like, you're stupid. 
Oh, why don't you have any girlfriend feelings for me anymore? Mm. God, I hate you. Does she do that in front of you, or you hear no, about it because no, she does it when you're... afterwards, uh -huh. right? All right, well, she is an emotional wreck because... The guy you're with right now has moved on from her, and she can't live without him, and you're ruining her life. And Oh, I know, too, but this is the thing. Okay, get You could care less. Get this, right. Because you have no compassion for your fellow human being. I know, I know. I don't like girls, but, man. Yeah, I don't okay. like girls either. We live in Federal Way, right? Yes, my condolences, this yes. This girl, this girl lives in Everett. She lives where? Everett. Everett. Oh, wow. A major right. upgrade, by the way, from Federal Way. Not saying much, of course. Crazy. Every girls are crazy. Every girls are pretty crazy. Yeah, whack. And like, yes. why is it that she just pops in the neighborhood? Federal way girls a lot more fun to hang out with. I'll tell you that right now. No, I love federal way girls. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. You can find a nice Everett girl if you look, though. You can't. Okay. Yeah. All right. So she's a crazy Everett girl, and you sound like you're a little scared of her. Uh, no. Oh, I not. think you are. Not you not wouldn't not fight her. No, let me tell you, too. Let me let me finish. You ready to fight her? Yeah, oh, this is that's why I'm calling you, right? Uh-huh. No, 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 no. You fight it, you're going to lose. No, no. You no, can't no. win. <laughs> listen. There's no, listen, okay. So she just pops up in the neighborhood. Like, how do you just end up in Federal Way from Everett at, like, 1.30 in the morning? Comes over, oh, well, um, can I spend the night? It like, happens to me all the time. What is that? It can happen. Yeah. And oh, then, like... Cafe Arizona, you know, you need mm -hmm, a place to crash. Mm-hmm. So, and, like... She was over there hanging out with them yesterday. I don't care if they hang out or whatever. You know what I'm saying? All right. But Obviously, gotta... there are two things happening here. Number one, you're afraid of fighting her because of all the good reasons that you should be because she'll kick your ass. Number she'll, two. She'll knock hers into tomorrow. Uh, number two is your concern that he's still doing things with her. That's not the real all. That's the not real underlying theme of this call. If not nope. uh, able to pick up on, well, then leave it to the expert that is me. Leave it to the good doctor that is me to uh, yeah. rip under the surface here and find out what's really bothering this girl from <laughs> Federal Way. She's worried that the Everett girl still has something going on on no, the sidelines no. with the new guy you're seeing. Nothing. Yes, you do. And no, she no. probably does. They're that's probably... Why, that's why they were hanging out yesterday and then uh -huh. she found out that I was coming over and she left. Well, why were they hanging out yesterday to begin with? They were all hanging out. Me or... He's a twin, so the twins are hanging out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whatever. She was is. hanging out with the twins. I believe that. Oh, I love when her <laughs> twins hang out. Yes. <laughs> no. I'm not scared to fight. That's why I'm calling you. Am I allowed to handle my business when she's, like, trying to intrude upon If she my gets manner? aggressive in your face, of course you're allowed to clock her. But um, no, like... You'll get your ass kicked. You better run quick. Yeah. <laughs> No She's way. a crazy Everett girl. You don't want to fight her. Maybe I'm a crazy federal way girl. That's we true. It's a good point. But you don't have backup. She's got backup. And I do too. You got backup? I don't, I don't even need backup. See, See you don't have backup. People don't who say they don't need backup don't have backup. Yeah. Who's your backup? Yeah, people in Enchanted Village. Much. Who's yeah. your backup? Give me some names. First names of your backup. <laughs> Call them out right now. They'll be there's, listening on, I'm not her backup. There's Carrie, <laughs> there's Tracy. Carrie is not your backup. Tracy is not your backup. She doesn't Tracy have... Is too, my Tracy's best. not ready to jump in Tracy, for you. You Tracy's know it. Tra Tracy's you're ready. telling me Tracy's ready to jump in for you. Yeah, for sure. Carrie is for sure. Oh, Carrie's not even thinking... Carrie, Anything. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. get me in a car Carrie's with your boyfriend right now. I'm going to get her in a car accident because she's swerving over the road because she's lying so bad. Yeah, whatever. I'm coming to see you, see? You have no backup. And you, backup. Vinny the Pooh's laughing at you. Whatever. Because he knows the sound of a girl with no backup. Oh, okay, see? Whatever. All right. Baby got no backup. If you're convinced you got backup, <laughs> then it's on. It's a girl it's, war. I don't even need it, see? Come on now. Why? Because you can handle all her and all her backup on your own? <laughs> nah. Obviously, you've never been in a fight with a crazy Everett girl who just <laughs> lost her boyfriend to a federal way girl. Whatever. Federal way. They're better. filled with rage. A little bit. <laughs> can, you handle, can you handle an 18-year-old filled with rage from yeah, Everett? Please. What are you going to do? What's your best move in a confrontation? In a confrontation, punch her in her mouth. Mm-hmm. The that's old puncher in the mouth trick. Oh, yeah. I didn't know she was familiar with that one. Ooh, that's a goodie. Uh-huh. And then after you punch her in the mouth, what do you do next? Do you admire your work? Put her to the ground and then kick her in your face. How are you going to oh. put her to the ground? It's nice to say put her to the ground. What are you going to do? Or down by her hair, whatever mm -hmm. you got to do. I love when girls pull other girls down by the hair. Mm. It's pretty hot. <laughs> I'm next. Mm-hmm. Until you get thrown in the slammer. Or is that still hot, too? <laughs> yeah. 
Girls in the Slam is really hot. <laughs> Movies like that. <laughs> Downloading that on my iPod right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hopefully she'll start to mellow out and you guys can just enjoy your relationship. But, but probably when she moves on, you'll get less excited and interested in him and you'll decide to break it up. She likes the drama. Uh -huh. Maybe you like yeah. the drama. You like the drama? I do like the drama, too. You look good? What's that? You look good or no? Do I look good? Yes. You can look at me online. All right. Where? My space, babe. My space. What's your, what do we look for to get on your space? Whoops. <laughs> Federalwaygirl.com. Girl's so, going to get her uh, ass kicked. I think you can search by my email or like... You um, want to give your email out over the air? No, thank you. <laughs> well, give me something that we can all go to. We want to see who's going to get their ass kicked. All right. Uh, <laughs> Crystal. Uh, type in Crystal. Crystal. Have you ever emailed me through MySpace? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. No, I don't. Well, it's, just, it's my Hotmail account. You've never even because I got MySpace, baby. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing on it. <laughs> I got one picture. I got no pictures. <laughs> Do I have any pictures up there? I, don't, I haven't checked. I'll put something up there. All right. Anyway, what's your display name? Uh, it's Crystal. K R Y S T L E. You can't be the only Crystal. Yeah, Six hundred of those. No, like so, like that. From all someone in this country is spelling her name the same way. So it's like Chris Tail then. Yes. <laughs> you got it, Steven? Is she there? Are you with her? Uh, Arizona, I'm watching Idaho, Illinois, Massachusetts, Vermont, Rhode Island, Rhode Island. Next page. Mm -hmm. I'm checking. Can't you search like 50 miles away? Oh, I didn't know. Maybe you can. You can search yeah. 10 miles away. Oh, there you go. 50 miles away. I'll do that. <laughs> uh, unable to find Chris Tail 50 wow. miles away. How did you spell it again? K R Y. Yeah. S-T-L-E. Oh, S-T-L-E. Oh. Ah, oh. oh, Steve. I'm not good at it. Dickie. What's the problem? What's the problem, What's Steven? The problem? Kick your ass next, Steven. Whoa. Man, I'm going to get an every girl in the federal way. going to double team you and kick your ass. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, now there's 37 with that. Oh, jeez. What a unique spelling. <laughs> right. <laughs> in the city alone, 37. <sighs> Is there any other way we could find you? Give us your email address. No one's going to care. Seattle, Seattle, Seattle. You'll get a whole bunch of emails today, and then it'll start to dwindle down. What's your email right. address? Destiny's Change at Hotmail.com. You writing that down, David? Destiny's Change? Yeah, D-E-S-T-I-N-Y-Z, -E and then Change. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, he tripped over his... He's got ten thumbs. Over stuffed bologna sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Anytime soon, Steven. Well, the... Little thing is loading. Uh -huh. <laughs> what about MySpace? Does is it that say uh, failure is not an option? Is your headline? Yep, that's okay. me. Wow. Well, there she is. And uh, your evaluation is? How old is she again? Well, okay. 18. Uh, well, if that's her, she's not uh, not large, that's for sure. All right. She's a small girl. She looks small. small little federal well, way girl. Looking she's over her shoulder. With a lot of fight in her. She thinks she's tough. She thinks she knows what's going on. Everyone's tough till they get punched in the mouth oh. once. Oh, <laughs> what else are you uh, seeing? She's, she's you seeing a, Gemini. Are you seeing a pretty hot 18 year old or what? Yeah, it's not too bad. I wouldn't. All right, I got to take a break so I can look. <laughs> All right. All right, <laughs> Crystal. Totally about, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks for calling and uh, call us back with an update. Oh, for sure. Keep, keep your oh, yeah. guard up. What was that? View more pictures. That's not bad. Yeah, view more pictures. Right, thanks. That bad. The T Man. Power. Power. Eric Powers. <laughs> An alleged prostitution ring inside an east side massage parlor Again? is shut down tonight, but did police go too far gathering evidence? Ah, oh, they always do. <laughs> you gather more evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Three undercover officers say in court documents they left this Bellevue home as soon as they had sexual contact. They sent three undercover officers to bust up the prostitution deal in Bellevue or I'll wherever do it, it I'll was. I'll do it, I'll do it. Yes. Somebody getting raped, armed robbery, right. yeah, sent a guy in a squad car. Yeah. Then Three guys on the case of the prostitution on the east side. Three undercover officers say in court documents they left this Bellevue home as soon as they had sexual contact with the women working inside. So it wasn't even like a like a store, it was a it was a house? You said a Bellevue home. Yeah, it's like a home. It's like a white house. You recorded this? Yes. It's just like regular old white looking house. Picket fence. Picket fence. That's right. <laughs> Jungle gym in the backyard. You got a little it. Swing set. You never would know. Oh, I never did know. That's the problem.
except for the wheelchair accessible ramp in front. Mm-hmm. And the high amount of traffic going in and out, probably. Yeah. Oh, geez. Three undercover officers say in court documents they left this Bellevue home as soon as they had sexual contact with the women working inside. Right, they made sure to have the sexual contact first. Then they read them their rights. Right. Your police chief says they worked closely with prosecutors uh-huh. to make sure this case wouldn't be thrown out like a similar one out of Linwood was last week. Yeah, this same thing just happened in Linwood. Yeah. Cops are all over these cases. But don't they have to go all the way, oh. really, in order to I prove think, that that's what happened? I think you should be their lawyer. I don't know. It seems like they are willing. Well, because the women could say, oh, I was just kidding about the money. I mean, you know, it wasn't a big deal. We didn't. We never did anything. So don't they, if if they go all the way, don't they then have to nut, too? (laughs) Finish the job? I mean... I think you pay first, though, Stephen, so... Mm -hmm. They get the money, and then they don't have to do them. By the way, before I forget, we printed out pictures of the last caller. I am very amazed. I didn't expect her to look this good for an 18-year-old. I didn't expect her to be looking this big time. Well, I mean, she'll get her ass kicked in this fight (laughs) against... Well, she could have that little scrappy thing going here. But the, you didn't make it clear, Steve, when you pulled up her pictures. Well, I went to she the... She looks uh, pretty good. And I went to the more pics, yeah. If she needs some grown man weight on her... Oh, dear. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed. It's not to, not Steven's type, though, I don't think. I told Vinny the Pooh to be uh, emailing her later. You going to do that? Uh, I'm trying to do that right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Forget later. <laughs> I do see he's punching away on his little side. Oh, oh he is punching away on it. Mm-hmm. It's a little sidekick. Little it's funny. Side You're emailing her right now? Uh-huh. Oh, jeez. What are you writing? I don't know yet. I'm, I'm trying to get her address mm-hmm. right. Hey, hey, it's Vinny. Uh, Want to be later? But she looks. She is a skinnyish white girl. She's if she's gonna be taking on this girl who's all upset about her boyfriend. It was a good move, by the way, by the boyfriend to move on to this skinny white girl in uh, in federal way. She looks pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. But the the girl left hanging in the twisted in the wind is all pissed off. She's gonna fight her in all likelihood. She may get her ass kicked. She may have that little scrappy white girl thing going for her. But how long does that last? Once you get a girl like this on the ground, like that was my problem. In in high school, I used to get in a lot of fights, and I was really good on my feet, throwing punches, throwing them fast, trying to get out of there quick. But once me and whoever I was fighting hit the deck at the same time, it was over. <laughs> once the girl got you down on the ground. <laughs> once the girl. Yeah. <laughs> I was wishing every day. Once I got, once I hit the deck, it was over. I was the opposite. I was 120 pounds. And I'm a little worried for her. She may not be pretty no longer. Mm-mm. If she thinks she's tougher than she is. I'm sure a lot of these skinny white girls from Federal Way think they're a little tougher than they are. There's a lot of fast food joints in Everett. So you may want to put that, and they're always frequent. Yes. You may <laughs> want to put that in your PS that you write to her there, Vinny. All right. Did you go out last night? I did. I know you needed a wake-up call this morning. I did. Yeah, right? Were you going out Were you going out in a working capacity, or were you going out as a civilian? Uh, a civilian. A civilian! <laughs> oh, wow. No camo on? No. No mm-hmm. marine blues? Mm-hmm. I, mean, I work on the weekends, so i, I got to go out for, for fun on the weekends. got to get something going on during the week. There you go. I understand. All right. And how did it work out for you last night? Ah, you mean good. these skinny girls from uh, Federal Way or what? Nah. No. No. Went to bed early. Started at like 7. Now, you saw these pictures. You didn't just email on my recommendation. You saw no, these I pictures, saw, right? I saw the pictures. And you're in. Not bad. Yeah. Not. A little better than not bad. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, right. there like, how many pictures is there? Like seven? So I got it printed out here about nine pictures. Yeah. <laughs> like, like eight of them are eight of them are really hot looking. Mm-hmm. There's but, one that's kind of like blurry. And hey, what we should do is if she's serious about fighting this girl with a sh- she should they should reason of course. Uh, you should call. You have her on caller ID or what, Pasty? I don't have her on caller ID. You know, I just I was uh, gonna say call her back, ask her if the other girl from Everett has a MySpace area, then we can like do a little tail to tape here, she oh. clear the lines, and then have her call back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well. I don't think this girl needs to be fighting. She'll be in big trouble. Just be a lover, right? Oh, jeez. Like you, Stephen? That's right. Is that right? There's no reason to fight. What are you writing? A what? What are you oh, writing? I just told her I was... How uh, you know I was? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I was uh, uh, Vinny from the show uh, just to get back at me. Mm-hmm. That's it. Did you write Vinny the Pooh or just Vinny from the show? Uh, you don't like writing Vinny the Pooh, do you? I think I You're might You're not have... embracing the Pooh? I don't like to do it normally, but I think I might have. Um, no, I just wrote Vinny from the show. Vinny from the show. Mm. But it, but it says, before it says Vinny the Pooh. Like on my signature, it says Vinny the Pooh, though. Oh, it does. You have a standard signature that says Vinny the Pooh. Yes, I do. Nothing like seeing the Pooh in cursive writing. <laughs> hey, Pooh's hot when you see that. Mm. Oh, I gotta have him. Mm. And Dave emailed her. Pasty the Magnum. Oh, just. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting bombarded with emails right now. Right.
Trina, good morning. I shot the walrus. <laughs> Trina? Hello? Yes, my signature is just a blue dot. Yes, Trina, what do you got? Hi, I want you about um, relationships. An uh, older woman with a younger guy. Well, Trina, as you know, I'm sure full well, you've called the relationship guru. You have dialed up the relationship master who, in the most generous of fashions, for years now, has given... Unbelievable advice, free of charge. Lord knows why I do it, but I continue to do so with a smile on my face. Not really. Mm -hmm. I'm not a smiler. Yes, go ahead, Trina. Okay. If I was a smiler, I'd be smiling right now. I am in a relationship with a younger guy. We've been together nine years. I look really dorky when I smile, don't I? All right, go ahead. When you smile. I don't think it matters. I like yes. most. Not like some of us. <laughs> well, you think you look more dorky when you smile? I, I haven't smiled in years. Mm. <laughs> it was really hard at the wedding to smile because I don't smile. I never do. Yeah, you did have like a plastic smile on during your wedding. Big, dumb smile. Big, yes. dumb smile. The guy upstairs can relate. Oh, jeez. Uh, Trina? Yeah, that guy yeah. over there is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> what about old, what, you said older what? Okay, I'm I'm 43. Oh, Lord. Whoa. Yes. And, <laughs> and he just turned 30. You have a boyfriend who's 30. Um, yeah, well, we've been together nine years, so... Nine years. All right, so why are you calling now? It sounds like you're pretty secure in the relationship at this point. Um, no, not... Well, my best friend called me, and she's... Do you think uh, he likes me? What? No, go ahead. What? She's eh? got, um... Eh? She's thinking about dating a younger guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I should be giving her advice, because she sees the way my relationship is. And, and she's you know, envious... She's, seen everything. she's envious of your relationship. No, 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 no. Oh. Not even. She, she's just, um... She wants to date younger men now, and she's my age. But you are dating a younger guy for the past nine years, and you've been very happy, right? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Well, why do you stay with him if you're not happy? Well, well, yeah. I, well, yeah, I'm happy. I guess you get to that stage where you just, you know, want to... A break, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Even though he's a younger guy, nine years is nine years, and you're getting a little bored. Um, no, bored, just, no. I just want him to be more active, is all. You want him to be more active. You're ready to yeah. downgrade to an even younger guy. Yeah, he's getting too old for no, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I just wanted to be more, more All right, whatever. Active. So your friend came to you for advice, asking what do you think about her going out with a younger guy, and you didn't know what to tell her. Well, yeah, she well, told how... me she would never do that, but she she's thinking about it now. And All right, so what do you need from us? I mean, I as know. far as we'll older see. women go, here's my take on it. If you can stand the older woman smell, then you're in. <laughs> Once you get past that, well, some w older women, you got to be honest, have an older woman smell, right it's, or wrong. It's just different. I don't know. I don't smell older women. You don't think you have an older woman smell? No. It's like the cream or something. It's like whatever they put on their hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stephen, don't try to help out here, please. What? The cream? The cream, yes. Uh, the lotion, I guess. It's just an <laughs> older woman smell, period. <laughs> Not like the new car smell. It's not like the new car smell. It's the older woman smell. <laughs> now, your friend, I'm sure, has the older woman smell. How old is the guy that she's interested in? 30. 30. And she's also, like, 43 like you? Yeah, she's two months older than me. So, so yeah. she's just trying to blueprint your lifestyle right now. She's just trying to d make a ditto copy of what you got going on. I don't know, because what I got going on is not all that. So. Well, do you tell her that? Yeah, she sees the way my relationship is, but she's still... But well, you had started. nine years of uh, some kind of excitement before you got to this point, right? Yeah. Okay. So what are you asking me? What do you need from me, Trina? The old woman smell starting to get to me. I'm ready to move on. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you specifically want me to say yeah, to Well, you? if you can give me a little advice to give her. I think she came to the right person, and you, obviously, are just a... You know when someone's trying to copy your life so dead on, you get a little annoyed? I, that's what Trina's feeling. Is that what it is, Trina? What's she no, should get her own life and stop copying yours? Um, no, it's not really that. Okay. It's well, then tell her your true feelings, that maybe it's a little overrated to go out with a younger guy, if that's the way you're feeling, and let her then make her own conclusions. All right? In the meantime, know. scrub up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my love? Okay. Take care, Trina. Bye. Don't forget those hard-to-reach places, please. Yeah, Kanye West has been copying my life for years. Mm. Told him to stop. <sighs> Pissing me off. It's made a good run of it, though. Yeah.
1-866-663-T-MAN. Jennifer has called in this morning. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? What's up? Um, I'm calling because I... You went out as a civilian last night, huh? I did. Ah. Oh. <laughs> what happened? Anything big time or no? Slow night? Slow night. Hang on a second, Jen. Yeah, what? On a Thursday, slow night. Slow night? Where'd you go? A uh, little, little swat on Alki. Uh-huh. What was the highlight of the evening? Well, oh, really you went to, to Spuds, didn't you? That's right. No, I'm um, going to bed at a decent time, I guess. That's, that's a good thing? Yeah. I, I don't know. The nights I go out, if I go to bed at a good time, that's like pretty not when revealing I gotta, that it was a pretty lame night. Not when I got to get up this early. All right. That's what made you feel good about yourself. It, it, not really a highlight. That's the highlight of the evening. <laughs> yeah. I got was, to go to bed early. It wasn't really, it wasn't really like a, a noticeable highlight. And Jen, go ahead. Um, there was no one hung up with... Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Jen. Yes, yeah. Undivided uh, attention. You got it. Go. I you just wanted it. to say the guy who thinks all the granolas are in Western or up at Western is wrong. Yeah. He yeah. has uh, obviously never been to Olympia. All right. Now, there are granola girls in this state in a lot of areas. There's no doubt about that. This state, known as Washington State, last I checked, has its share of granola girls. Yes, but I think they all um, end up migrating towards the Olympia area. They're earthy, and they Very. all watch Leonardo DiCaprio sit down with Oprah yesterday and talk about the greenhouse effect. <laughs> did you see that, Stephen? I did not. Got my wife called me in. Oh, you got to hear what Leonardo... She's, my wife has gotten into this greenhouse effect stuff. Really? Yes. We got to donate to these charities. No, no, we don't have to donate to these charities. Well, if Oprah and Leo says so, well, then you should. Leonardo DiCaprio is just driving a Prius or some kind of hybrid car, and he's become now the, the face of the uh, saving the planet. From what? From all its troubles. Like? From us, apparently. I think the planet's okay. Uh-huh. Ask people in uh, Louisiana about the planet. The how planet it's ever decides that it's going to war against us, we will lose. Yeah. The planet will shake us off like a bad case oh, of yeah. fleas. The planet's fine. Don't worry about the planet. The planet survived pretty long on its own. Worry about yourselves. Now, what were you saying, Jen? Um, I was saying that they all migrate towards Olympia. Okay. Are you a granola girl or not? No, I'm oh, not. Oh, good. Good. And neither is uh, Crystal. By the way, <laughs> yeah. she, does, she doesn't look granola. Not whatsoever. a granola girl. No. I, I, I've never been. I've never. I've never been into granola girls. I know a lot of dudes that are. Uh, I, I'm actually friends with that are into granola girls. They once dragged me to the Red Door, or whatever it's called in, uh, in Fremont. 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 Yeah. Oh, it's just a disaster. Yeah. Every girl there more granola than the next. Please get me out of here. Good burgers though. Fremont used to be the worst for that. Good burgers at one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, never been there at one in the morning. Really? I'm shocked. I've been there for lunch. Most people don't go to the Red Door to eat, Stephen. Really? It's a I restaurant? I didn't even know it was a restaurant. No, that's, yeah. you, I think you're talking about Red Mill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... You got well, the Red Door actually is a restaurant. In Fremont? That's yeah, a restaurant Fremont, by yeah. day? A, yeah, but nobody eats there. I mean, it's like, like Axis. Really? Axis is, is a restaurant there. by day, but who eats there? Right, right. I mean, I've actually ate there at night, but... I've eaten there as well. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know what, Stephen? Maybe you're not the guy to talk about the scene, okay? The food scene. So you're not... You're not granola. No. What are you? Um... Do you have a MySpace account? I don't know. Seattle, uh, a city girl, I guess you'd say. Mm-hmm. Olympia? Mm -hmm. I unfortunately live in Olympia right now. And you're, dis and you're disgusted by all the granola girls you see left and uh, right? Not disgusted, They disgust kind of you? <laughs> you want them all to go and find their own little area and stop ruining Olympia's good name? Is that it? Yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> There's a huge contingent of fruity liberals in Olympia. You can't. No you yes, can, yes, there is. You can't get out of Olympia. Is that your problem? Um, I'm trying to actually move to Seattle. Seattle. And hopefully this week. Uh huh. Then you can enjoy a night at the Red Door. Right. <laughs> Take off your yeah. footwear and go have a good night. Yeah. All right. So, all right, city girl. <laughs> You don't have a MySpace account. Let's click MySpace account. You don't have a, a MySpace area, do you? Me? I do. You do? Oh. Yes. All right. How do we find you? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, when Terry Free's not here, right. not a morning like today, there's no I one to... I up a long time ago, but I think... There's, there's no one to give me those looks. Hey, it's like Halloween, man. We're just putting our hand in the big, big bag of candy. <laughs> big, big bag of candy. Oh, 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 see what you pull out. Oh, bit of honey. All right. <laughs> what is your uh, area? Good. How do we find you? I don't know. 
I don't remember what I filled oh, out, I but I think my... I was so angry when I got bit of honey as a trick-or-treater. But now that I'm older, I like Just them. throw it back in their face. Yeah, it sucked as a kid. Goodbye. I don't have time to chew this. Bit of honey. Anyhow. So your teeth can deal with that? Mm -hmm. not, not anymore. Come on, you don't know how to, how to find your own MySpace area? Well, I set it up like a long City time ago. City girl? I, I remember what my um little, yeah. like... Thing is. Yeah, people in Olympia only go to their computers like once every other month. It's <laughs> probably from like Tumwater. What's the display name? I mean, they go to Kinko's to go to their computer uh, every other month. Wazoo Coog. Oh, you're a you're a Coog. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. All one word. When'd you graduate? Last December. Wow, and now you're trying to figure things out, huh? Like every other Coog that just recently graduated. She's definitely a city girl. From Pullman to Olympia. No, hey. Yes, yes. Most people when they graduate college have to figure out what to do with their lives. Don't take that as a knock. I, I love. Kind of have a plan. I love female cooks. Let me hear your kind of plan. My kind of plan. Yeah. Um. Well, I just got a new job. So as what? As down. what? <laughs> I'm um in sales. Okay. Could you be a little yes. bit more vague, please? <laughs> uh, do you want a twenty sack this weekend, Tina? Mm -hmm. I'm selling. I'll take the rub hey. in the tuck. <laughs> I'll take the number two at the White House in Bellevue. Yeah, I work at a house in Bellevue. <laughs> yeah. What? What are you in sale? What are you selling? Um, I'm buying whatever it is. Shoes. Oh, you're selling shoes. All right. Wait, nothing to be ashamed. How exciting is that? Nothing to be ashamed of. I sold shoes for a week in my <laughs> life. I think I had so many jobs for like a week. <laughs> uh, sucks. I'm out of here. Where are you selling shoes? Where in Kent? In Kent. At a department store or a little uh, strip mall no. joint or what? No, I work for. Um, we like sell to buyers. Mm-hmm. So, That's normally how it works. That seems like a <laughs> reasonable people, plan. Tough to, to sell to buy the shoes. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to sell to non-buyers. <laughs> it's only my second week, but it's really fun. Uh, it seems so like far. you got the... <laughs> the, the training is going well it for seems you. like you got the gist of the job. Okay. Another reason, kids, you don't go to Wazoo. <laughs> so why uh, can you not come up with how we find your MySpace area? Did you not find it? Well... Did well, you find it or what? Well, there's no... I mean, how do you... I have Wazoo Coog and nothing came w, up. You spelled it W-A-Z-Z-U? Yes. <laughs> he knows how the little girl from Wazoo is spelling. Wazoo, C O U G, all one word. Mm hmm. Tell That's me. Your display name? You're the only Wazoo yeah. Coog up there. Right. But none come up. Well, I don't know what to tell you. All right, hang on. Pasty will figure it out. Oh, Steven yeah. has no idea how to f navigate through MySpace. No. Come on over well, to MySpace. Well, if I had more information, it would be helpful. Water there. waters. A pace, I, you I found that? the other one pretty quickly. You on that? Um, there is nothing for Wazoo Coo. Huh. We, wow. We, we already established that. Hello. Uh, I need Hello. some information. I don't well, know Why don't you pick up the line? She's waiting there. Okay. I'm waiting for the pictures. Okay. Right now, Terry would be really giving me a bad look. Oh, yeah. And I'd be like, hey, I understand. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, but it's for research of the callers. Uh, but Terry Free had to make an emergency flight to Eastern Washington because her mother is very ill. Yeah, but when the sleeve's away, the go to play. Sleeve is away. Time to play. Oh, Jays. <laughs> Maybe we should call Terry, see if she uh, can give us an update. Maybe we can put her on for a couple of seconds. <clears throat> Our thoughts are all with her. You ever know her? I don't want to call her live. Oh, okay. If she doesn't want to talk, I mean, I feel bad. Oh, okay. She's in a tough spot right now. Oh, she was that? obviously very close with her parents, and uh, her dad died a year and a half ago, and now her mom is in intensive care, so I'm not going to call her live. Anymore. All right. We'll call her off the air. But if she has a MySpace account, I'm going to look at all her pictures. Who is that, Terry? Yeah. Oh, jeez. The Wazoo Cook. <laughs> right. The legend. The T-Man. We may have to get used to saying the Las Vegas Sonics. Oh, jeez. From our partners at the Puget Sound Business Journal comes a report. The Las Vegas Sonics. Tomorrow that Seattle's basketball team yes. may be looking for a new home. Sure. The team had been angling for a bigger revenue cut from a $200 million renovation plan of Key Arena. So that's Howard Schultz's best move, an idle threat, saying he's going to move the Seattle Sonics to Las Vegas. Sounds like I it. invite you to move to Las Vegas, dude. <laughs> right. Good luck. They can't even get anyone in the building for their only sport in town, UNLV games. He's going to move the team to Las Vegas. Right. Last I checked, he's pretty much a local guy. Pretty much. And he's saying, oh, I'll move the team to Vegas. My ass, you will. <laughs> Be my guest. Dare you. Man. Idle threat from a guy that doesn't follow sports. Uh, many. Last I checked, not too many tourists go to NBA games. And that's what you mainly have in Las Vegas. I know there are a lot of locals now, but they could care less about any sport uh, that they have. They have too much going on there. Hey, we got Celine Dion tickets and Sonic Clippers. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Not happening. Is that the best he has as a negotiating move to say, well, I'll move the team to Vegas? Not really. Embarrassing. That plan died in the legislature, and the team says so did its desire to stay in the stadium once its lease with the city expires in five years. Mm. Oh, so it won't be until five years. Five years from now, they may move the team to Las Vegas, Stephen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, if you don't win any sort of championship until then, ah, uh, you can have fun. You're not concerned? <laughs> I'm not. No. Okay. Hey, we're pre-fucking at the Excalibur. Mm-hmm. Jesus. So stupid. <laughs> hey, they got quite the buffet there. Anyhow. I'm sure they do. Hey, what's this yellow stuff? You got Crystal back on the line, pasty? All right. Just want to warn her. Hey, we got your pictures. Yeah? I'm, I'm very surprised how good you look. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Now, what about wait, the girl wait, at Everett? See, does she, see, have, see. Does she have a MySpace area, the girl at Everett? What is that? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? You're about to... Put your life on the line against her in a hand-to-hand -hand yeah. combat moment. <laughs> Not one of your friends. And you haven't scouted her out? Nope. All right. Hey, um, can I give a shout-out to Marie real quick? Oh, it's down for us something I've been people. waiting for, yes, my whole career. Mm-hmm. There it is. Down for did you get Vinny the Pooh? Did you get Vinny the Pooh's email yet? I did. You did? I did. I emailed him back. You and did? What are you guys writing to each other? <laughs> That's what he's just like, hey. Oh, hey. I was like, hey. hey. Man, it's got to be cool. So you just email, hey. That's hey. it? Yes. Yeah. And then it's on, yeah. Stephen. That's how it works. And yeah, then you like, email hey, a little bit up? more at 2 a.m. Right. <laughs> hey, this is you. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> no. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, is that get, it? Well, I wanted the girls my space area. I want to check out who you're going to be fighting, who you got to worry about. We're worried about you now. We're in with you. What is that? Uh, you can look for her. And send me more pictures. Well, that, send, let me go send, see if I can find her yeah, for good. you. No, send you, uh, more pictures of you. Just send it to PurposeSourceRex.com. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, my, that's, that's definitely my new uh, email address. Gotta be. PurposeSourceRex.com. Good thing we didn't call Terry live on the air, by the way. Really? Pacey just called her during the break and said she's an emotional wreck, and uh, she's in the intensive care unit with her mom, and things aren't going great. We should all be thinking about her, obviously. And uh, she didn't want to come on the air. Glad we didn't call her. Mm -hmm. If you're just tuning in, Terry had to take an emergency flight late yesterday to uh, attend to her mom, who was in a tough situation health-wise, and we're hoping the best, but it's not looking great. The woman is 86 years old and has lived a very full, uh, full life, but it's never easy, obviously. Never easy. So we're here in the studio... Just the boy. Oh, yeah. Arriba. Purvis oh. Horse Red. You're on the air. And you know, I'm noticing with Terry not here, mm -hmm. I'm looking up and down the 73 lines that we have because we're taking a lot of calls today. Maybe it's partly that. But I'm noticing there are about five ladies to every male caller today. Wow. I think Terry normally scares the females away. Because she hates women. Well, the claws come out. She's a bit catty. No Terry doubt. hates women, and yet she loves them in her own special little way. But, isn't that interesting? Mm. Now, all these callers, one woman after another? Let's give her every Friday off. <laughs> Catherine, hello. I want you Hi. to see your my, their MySpace pages. What's up, Catherine? You know, I just wanted to say something about your comment on older women dating younger men. Yeah, it's very modern, very... Uh, and style yeah. kind of relationship, if you can just get past the old woman smell, you're good. <laughs> okay. I want you to go online. I have, My boyfriend is 13 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. I want you to go online to urbancougars.com. Uh, how about all these women giving us a websites to go to, email addresses, all kinds of pictures to look at. What's that now? Urban yeah. what? Cougars. Urban cougars. cougars are old women. Cougars. cougars. Older women who are women single. In their yeah, who go to bars. Early 40s who date men in their 20s. Right. What am I going to see there? What am I gonna... Okay. I'm sure there's a website with older women who love to date no, young. take a look at it. Take a look at it. I think one woman in the past. Didn't sometime like a couple of years ago some woman told us about that website? I Some, think so. That's pretty new. It's I know my, new. My, my little buddy Fancy Pants loves him a cougar. Oh, jeez. <laughs> always talks okay. about him. Mm -hmm. They're the horniest. Hey, I've always been into older women. From the time I was like 15, 16 years old, I was always trying to hook up with women who were like 30. You know, and, women in their 30s don't look And now like that I'm in my 30s, now that I'm, uh, I'm still, still attracted to older women. We don't look like we're in our 30s. Actually. How old are you, honey? I'm 33. Mm-hmm. Very old. Oh! <laughs> My boyfriend is 21. Uh huh. And, and how's that working out me. for you? He picked me. He picked you. Which is funny. How did he go about picking you, as you describe it? What did he do? He just saw me you somewhere, and he took that, you know, took the initiative. 
You were in the and lineup he, at the chicken ranch, and he picked you. What does that mean? You were you were picked by we him. Were, he we were somewhere, and he you went were out of somewhere. His way to get my attention. All right. Where was the somewhere? Can you be a little bit more it's specific? Just a, just a function. He you were at a function. We were at a basketball function, and he. So he's. One of those white guys to... hasn't given up on the NBA dream, and he was playing basketball at some little youth group organizational deal. No, he, and plays, he plays for the college. He plays for UW. He plays for UW. Your boyfriend is a UW basketball player. Yes. And he's 21, and he goes out with you, the 33-year-old. Yes. Well, there are only so many UW basketball players, and we're very familiar with the team because we're all big fans, <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about this guy so we can figure out who he is. First of all, she's narrowed it down because how many twenty-one-year-olds are on the uh, on the roster? Right. Probably well, about four or three five. Three or what? I said, well, I know three of them. Okay. We, all, we have we have mutual friends. Uh huh. Well, who's your boyfriend? I'm not going to tell you. Well, we can take some guesses. Twenty-one-year-olds is Bobby Jones. Want his number? We'll call him. Oh, it is. No. We have his number in the Rolodex. No. We have uh, we have Brandon Rua. Is that your boyfriend? No, Brandon Roy is not my boyfriend. Oh, we call him Brandon Roy because we're oh. that close. Okay. Mm -hmm. My is, point is, what? it's not like it's disgusting. It's not disgusting. Now, do you, you believe? It sound like you know we smell bad and we, we look. Up. What did you say? You said we smell funny. Are you his only girlfriend? Um, I don't care. You don't care. Oh, wow. I don't know. You don't, don't care really if last night he was with some other girl, the night before he was with some other girl, and I'm you're, not concerned and about you're, it. You're penciled in for this coming Tuesday. You wouldn't care. No, I'm not. I'm not concerned. I do the penciling. He doesn't pencil me. Oh, in. that's right. He picked you, and now you do the penciling. You've been <laughs> no, in control. Of, I, I'm just saying it's a, It doesn't matter. You've been in control of this relationship from the word go. So while he's at college doing the basketball and the scholastic thing, what are you up to these days, work wise or whatever? I work for a mortgage finance company in Bellevue. Mm -hmm. they, they probably call her the old chick that feeds him. What's that? Well, maybe <laughs> I want a meal from her. Maybe I needs to be refinanced, baby. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you believe uh, she's going out with a UW basketball player? No. no. She's like paying for their gas and mm -hmm. giving them money. Yeah, just because you're gassing up his car doesn't mean you're going out with him. Her son's probably a friend of one of theirs. Uh, okay, I'll rephrase it. I'll rephrase it. Yes. I'll rephrase it for you. I mean, I, I sleep with him. We hang out. We wow. do things together. Okay. Not the girl. Is it a relationship? Not in my mind, but But he whatever. wants you. We hang out. The bottom line is he wants you, he's into you, and he's, and, he's, and he's 21, and he screws you better than any guy ever has. I didn't say that. Well, I want to know who it is. It's okay. All right, I'll have to make some calls then. Hang on. Call Bobby Jones's number. Find out who this girl is. You get nervous, aren't you? I'm not nervous. Mm -hmm. Do you want his phone number? Do you want to call him? I'm calling Bobby Jones. He reached Uncle BJ. He's okay. not oh, here. That's... <laughs> Uncle, <laughs> Uncle BJ, call not around. Him? You're lucky. Do you want to call him? Oh, he's Bobby number Jones, five. Yeah. In fact, he might not even be 21 yet. He's number five. Number five. Who's number five? What number five Don't is, say it out loud. Just look at it. Don't it say it out loud. I know who it is. <laughs> I don't say it out loud. See, the roster. <laughs> say it out loud. I, it says he's a freshman. Yeah, he's a freshman. He's so Joel? Uh, freshman. Yeah. Joel Smith? No. Yeah. Uh-uh. Mm, number five. Okay. Does he... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Did he play last year as a freshman? Uh, he, I don't... The name's not yeah, familiar to me, so no. Really? Uh -uh. If the name's not familiar to us, then, I mean, technically, maybe a UW basketball player, today, but he doesn't play. Say that again? He's from Massachusetts. Well, I might give it away. Oh, it is. <laughs> I mean, you're not with a guy on the team that actually plays. I thought you were, well, like, with someone I, that gets I, in the game. First of all, that's not even the point. My point that is, is the point. Yeah, no, it's not. That's Start, always the point. Start without saying care. she has a boyfriend on the UW basketball right, team. Yeah. No, no it's just a guy she sleeps with who doesn't young. play. What I'm saying is he's young. Mm -hmm. He has a scholarship for basketball. So you like began good. saying you got a boyfriend on the UW basketball team. Now you're just a, a, someone he screws who's a walk-on, no, who's a water boy. Cougar. Now you had one ticket to one game last year. He's the, he's the team manager. He gets the equipment ready. He <laughs> break, carries the balls. He gets the water. He's a freshman. Right. He didn't even play he's, last year. And he's not I'll even 21. That. It doesn't There's offend no me. It doesn't offend me. You're just very excited. I don't care what he you're does. You're just very excited. And you love the fact that there's a 21-year-old that wanted to have sex with you, at least on a couple of occasions. That's what it comes down to, right? Right. And that older women have a lot going for them. Hey, I just said, I've always been into older women. What are you fighting for here? Oh, no, I just wanted you to look at the site and know that. Hmm. Are you on that site? 
our are, age. Are you on Am the I, site? No. You're not on the site? No. So you must you must not be too much to look at? Is that the deal? No, I mean, I, it's not like I'm a vegetarian switching to meat. Men are men. If oh. he comes to me and he's 21 or 22, then so be it. And if he's not, I don't care. Okay. I don't teach young boys. So I'm just saying that it's yeah, not so like it's You don't gross. teach. You're just going along for the ride. And you're loving every right. second of her at least close to it. Okay, very good. I'm glad you called. Not really. Thanks very much. Bye. There she goes. Jeez. Got a lot to prove. 21-year-old freshman, not buying it. Oh, yeah, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm 21 for sure, lady. Uh, Ashley, hello. I'll take Supreme in my tank. He's a cute guy, though. <laughs> Steven likes him now. <laughs> Steven's going to fight you for him. <laughs> Ashley. Hello? Ashley, are you there? Yeah. What's up? Um, that's... How old are you? 14. Oh. What can we do for you? What do you want? What do you want? Uh, right. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Go ahead, Ashley. What's on your mind? Um, I, I just have a question. Because um, I was listening. Yes. And I really didn't know, but um, are people hooking up with um, DJ Vinny with Pooh? Are people hooking up with him? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, depends where you're hanging out. Huh? Where are you hanging out these days? You going out at all or no? You should be... To Club Spectrum. Really? Got a, what is that? Like an 18... How, how, do you, how, do you get into, how do you get into a club? I have because uh, our ID cards are so cheap, it's like laminated. So you and got I'll a fake apart laminated, beautiful-looking ID? Yeah. And you're getting into 18 and over clubs? No, just 16. S 16 and over. They have 16 and over clubs? Sounds yeah. like it. And I'll, I'll change the grade and then super glue it back together. Man, you are pretty resourceful. Ashley, the 14-year-old, fooling those very scrutinizing bouncers at the right. 16 and over club. Here's my ASB card. Mm-hmm. I know. Um, some smokes and a beer. Is I know DJ's been to the pool. Is, his little brother, is, he, is he mixing at a, at a 16 and over club? Uh, he might be. He's out getting breakfast right now. We can't ask him or we'd be just torching him right now. Get him on the line. Get me being the poor on the line. He must feel old in that 16 and over club. I don't when yeah. I go, but he does. If you're 19, <laughs> well, I'll find out this week. If you're 19 <laughs> nope, feel great. at a 16 and over club, you must feel old. Now, maybe the pool's 21. Yeah. If you're going to a 16 and over club, why would they have a problem with you as a 14-year-old wanting to get in? I mean, obviously there's no alcohol, and it's not even an 18-year-old and over club where they're not letting minors in. If it's a 16 and over club and this 14-year-old girl wants to get in, why does she have to go to the great lengths to make a fake ID? Why don't they just let her in? Not sure. Why don't they let you in? Explain that to me like I'm a 14-year-old. Oh, All right, she, she wants to hear me explain this again. Can you turn your radio down? Oh, I did. Okay. Why do you have to, like, do you put on ma a lot of makeup and stuff? In order for, like, if, in order for me to get in. You put on a lot of makeup? Because, I, don't, okay. I don't like to wear makeup. I don't but need it. But you're forced to, or else you won't be able to get in the club. you got to make yourself look at least 16. So what are you caking on tonight to make sure you're in? Uh, well, I don't, like, my friends do it for me. Your friends put your makeup on for you? Mm -hmm. Jeez. How old are your friends? the same age but they look older than me they look older than you and One they have the guys is 32 they, oh, can, they can pass for 18 are you hearing this crazy huh she's 14 she's got her friends put on the war paint so she can get in a what club where's me in the post you on the line spectra was it who's that in the back room you can hear her she's 12 she wants in yeah my sister how old is she six is she going to the club with you tonight? She wants to get into the 10 and over no, club she's tonight. going to school. <laughs> What's the, I don't understand the content of the 16 and over club. I don't know. Can't Ooh. wait to have kids and have them sneaking into clubs. Probably hey, because people the are independent. They can drive, maybe. I don't know. Vinny. Uh, yeah, what's going on? You uh, mixing at a 16 and over club? Yeah, I do one, uh, I do one on Saturday. <laughs> oh, and I do a clown birthday parties on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Like, oh, job. He's got to get the money. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, it sounds like, you know. It sounds like this 14-year-old wants to hook up with you. Steven does Barney. Are you set up now for the weekend? Are you giving her uh, the guarantee that it's you and her this weekend or what? Uh, uh, how old? That would be highly illegal, keep in mind. How old is she? She's 14, and she wants oh, to make sure she gets in the club this weekend. For the 14 year old call the show? Uh, she wants to go to the club this weekend? Usually, yes. 14-year-olds are told that the show is a little mature for them, and Pasty will uh, have them. But she made it in. She had the makeup caked on, and she fooled Pasty. Pasty saw the fake ID? Yes. Okay, uh, go on through. She changed her grade, and he let her in. Yeah, you look old enough. It'd be kind of tough for a 14-year-old to go to an already... But my question is, why? If there's a 16 and over club, 
What's the reason that they won't let a 14-year-old in if she really wants to get in? I don't even think 14 is in high school yet. 14 is a freshman in high school. But, but again, the 18 and over club doesn't let anyone under 18 because they don't want minors. The 21 and over, obviously, because you can drink at under 21. Why, if there's a 16 and over club, why would they let a 15 or a 14-year-old in? I mean, a 15, I think, is like, yeah, God, that's so young. They have to be dropped off by their parents. Sixteen is young to be going to the quote unquote club. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's definitely my. I mean, are you playing uh, like? Are you playing full lyrics at the club? Are you like editing? What are you doing? Oh no, I'm not editing at all. It's a club. So you're playing. That's what I'm thinking. You're playing full lyrics. Yes. Do you play the Wiggles? The Wiggles? What are you? What? <laughs> Never mind. I don't even know what he's talking about. I don't, I don't want to know. know. It's a kids, kids show. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, we're still here, Ashley. Huh? We're trying to figure out your deal. Oh, well, I, you know, D is DJ Vinny Pooh still on the phone? Yeah, he's on the phone. If you <laughs> oh. Well, Keep I talked to your little brother. Oh. See, there you go. When's my little brother supposed to DJ in that club? Go, you should go to his club. Mm -hmm. he, goes to, he goes to Club Spectrum, Delon. Yeah. That's a cute little moment. Here. Yeah, he's under it. I know, it is, right? He's getting in because he knows Vinny. Jeez. Well, I uh, think the Bowser should be on top guard this weekend. Oh, there are 14 year olds getting in the 16 and over club. We're discovering the corrupt underbelly of the 14 and over club. Unbelievable. When you dig under the surface of the 16 and Jeez. over club, what you'll find going on in there. The I don't know. I'm not, the poo. I'm not working at the front door. All I do is spin the music and zap. Wait, no one's blaming Jeez. you. Take it easy. You're not guilty of anything and I yet. Don't, and I don't take any of them home. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, last night. All right, she needed a ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So what's going on in this club? Um, nothing. I mean, we, I mean, we pack it out with every weekend and... We got a we got a little you know Halloween jammy this weekend. And mm -hmm. So it's going down. <laughs> yeah. And where was I? Sixteen. Not no clubs. Club. No. No. What happened to watching movies at Jen's house like most girls did when I was growing up? Oh jeez. Sixteen. I was uh, Super Nintendo and macaroni and cheese at the house. Oh, so Ashley, what do you need to know? Why can I get in? <laughs> Cause why I, cause why cause can you get 14. in? Because this. You're getting in. You've been there. You got your ID, right? No. I thought you said you had an ID. It got washed too many times. Oh, you lost your ID. and you So you've been in before, but you're worried now you won't be able to get in. Yeah, because the lady at the desk, she's rude. What desk? Like, will you go well, I'm show your I'm ID? Ticket lady. Where, at the club? They have a desk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like Make it look more school-like? Yeah. Here's your badge. Bring her an apple. Yeah. Well, probably because you're underage. That's maybe why she's rude to you. And Ashley, if you weren't able to get in this weekend, oh, I'd hate to think about it, but if you weren't able to get into the club this weekend, what else could you do on your Friday and Saturday night? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just go home and watch Fantasy Island like wow. the rest of us. Jeez. Our parents dropping their kids off at 14. Here you go, honey. See you later. Who drives you to the club? Um, either my friend's older cousin. Your cousin? Yeah. Mm. How old's your cousin? 17. Your mom's cool with you going to the club? She doesn't know. She doesn't know. Uh -oh. where, where does she think you are on a Friday or Saturday night? At the movies. You, you tell her you're going to the movies with your cousin, you wind up going to the club? Yeah. If she found out, what would happen? She wins it, I don't know. you got to beat that sister down and screaming in the background. That's what older sisters do. <laughs> yeah, Mom, it was another five-hour movie we went to. Mm. People can smoke in the theater. My, my friend... I found these six guys in the movie. Yeah, go ahead. Your friend what? My friend, her mom, knows that she goes. How old is she? She's 14? Mm-hmm. Every friend has a cooler mom. Yeah, but the mom's 29. Wow. If that. All right. Well, what, what, what do you want me to say? Get another ID if you need one so bad. Because I, I can't get one because that's the only one that I have because the one that I have now. So what do you need me to do? Oh, yeah. you, you want me to find you the ID hookup? Yeah. All right. Just wander around you, dumb. <laughs> yeah. Pioneer Square. Yeah, just places. start wandering around Pioneer Square. You'll find the ID hookup. you got to be responsible if you want to dabble in the world of fake IDs. you got to be resourceful. You can't have it go through the wash ten times. Yeah. Um, how, how old do you have to be to get into um, Studio B? Studio B, uh, baby, the Poe, 18? Uh, 17. 17. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you need to change that grade again. Because some, somebody told me that you just have to be in high school. Kind of getting worn out on the six seat and over club. She's ready to take the next jump. Oh, yeah. I can see, man. Wow, this is interesting. I have no idea. Fascinating. She's 14? She gets the makeup going. She looks like she's 16, she said. Well, I don't know, Be careful, man. They dance like people at normal clubs? I mean... You dance a lot? Doing the ass clapper on some guy? The ass clapper? You grinding on guys at the club? 
Ashley? Huh? You grinding on guys? No. What are you doing at the club? How are you dancing? I'm dancing by myself with my, my friend. What are some, what are some 16 year old. No asset to the club whatsoever. Oh, it is. What if some 16 or 17 year old guy wants to get like up on you? What do you do? Dance with him back. You do? Yeah. You sure you're ready for that? Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if, if I'm not by myself. And her mom thinks. She said, Herbie, Herbie rides again. Is yeah. this on the air? Herbie, Herbie's riding again. It's on the air. Fully loaded. Yeah, that's what we do here, Ashley. We do a little radio show from 6 to 10 o'clock. You know? Get off the Okay. Ashley, have a good Halloween weekend. <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe it'd be good for you just to have a cool evening around the house. Or maybe not. Boggle with your parents. Yeah. You grow up to be kill breath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, club it is. Mm-hmm. Man, fine line somewhere in the middle. We missed out on a lot. Not going to clubs at 14. They weren't giving me club access at 14. Jeez. They weren't giving me 16 and over clubs either. And I went, I grew up in an area where clubs were all over the place. Oh. New York City doesn't have too many 16 and over clubs. I'll tell you that right now. I could have just put on a lot of makeup and gotten into. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I looked damn ID. when my friends put the makeup on me. Let me tell you, try not to grind up on me. The T-Man. I know why. Dozens of people looked right at the body but did nothing. Turns out they thought the woman who'd hung herself from a tree oh, in Frederica, Delaware, right. was a Halloween decoration. Neighbors noticed her body Wednesday morning as they had breakfast. Undoubtedly, so did some of the drivers who passed the busy street where she hung. Oh, my goodness. Three hours later, someone did call police who removed the body of the 42-year-old. All right, woman. let me see if I understand this right. The woman hung herself in her, like, front yard. And there were people that were just looking at it and passing by, thinking it was a Halloween decoration? Correct. That looks real. And that's like going to great lengths to make your house look scary, I'll tell you that right now. Some real sacrifice. Uh-huh. But that wasn't what it was. No. People were staring at it or passing by, not even realizing what was going on for hours. That must have been expensive. Uh-huh. Interesting. Did they have those at Walmart? Not like... They could have done anything, because you hang yourself, you're pretty much dead in like 10 seconds, right? It's quick, yes. Mm -hmm. Although, if your head gets decapitated, it can stay alive for like 45 seconds to a minute. Says who? The, you speak to anyone that's been I on that end? I love this kind of stuff. I, I, I read about it. <laughs> okay, maybe that's the myth, but I don't think you've interviewed anyone who got their head taken off and uh, was able to verify that, right? Well, it was a quick interview. It was only alive 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you see me? Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you that. You can lay there and look at your You're, you're telling torso. me if you get your head chopped off in like a guillotine, your head could look back and say, ooh, I've never seen my hips at this angle. Yes. <laughs> Man, I was kind of fat. Yeah. No, it's true. Right. I'm well, sure. I'm not fat. I have more to live with. Mm -hmm. Put my head back on. So while your head, late, is, while your head is lying there for 45 seconds still alive, you could say, I'll come back and get all you and really scare everyone. Oh, yeah. You haven't heard the last of me. That's right. That's how I'd go out. Whatever. It's not worth trying, though. Hmm. I'm telling you. All right, first person, <laughs> they come down here this morning and be willing to get their head cut off. We can see if they can uh, still talk for 45 seconds. Somebody knows. Uh, maybe it's not that long, but it's How long enough to look at. Well, How would know? Doctors know if the head can stay alive. Uh -huh. You're a little too far gone on this whole... Uh, I'm telling you. But this is your weekend. So if you cut the cut a foot off, does it still move around a little bit? Okay. I mean, is it all parts of bodies or just the head? No, it's it's just the head because it's got the big blood supply in the brain and everything. It can the brain stays alive. Yeah, the big brain for forty five seconds. You can like grab your own head and move it around. Hey, look Check out the big brain on hot. Oh yeah, ah. I'm staying alive forever. Right, right. Right. So your your arms and stuff still work? I, I don't know about that. I, I don't know think you, you could pick your up your eyes head. work. But you're the expert. If I don't, you don't think know I'm who's the expert on what I said. <laughs> then you feel say whether the body can but stay you said alive. You can pick up your head and move and move yeah, around. That was probably a joke. Oh, I see. But you, I know that you can see yourself. The, the head stays alive for like 30 to 45 minutes. And you minutes can look back at your own body. Yes. Unless your head gets chopped off and your face is in the ground and it's like, ah, oh, damn. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even worth it. I my, can't see my myself. My last view sucked. <laughs> you can check out the look of your body from lying on the floor, your head just wobbling around there, and you can say, man, why didn't anyone tell me out of that big piece of lint in my belly button? You can, <laughs> yes. you can do that. All right, if you Pretty say cool. so. Uh, it's cool to think about. Uh, all right, yes, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Dozens of people looked right at the body but did nothing. Turns out they thought the woman who'd hung herself from a tree yeah. in Frederica, Delaware, mm -hmm. was a Halloween decoration. Neighbors noticed her body Wednesday morning as they had breakfast. Undoubtedly, so did some of the drivers who passed the busy street where she hung. Uh, Halloween is not really a holiday where you get depressed and you, uh, you take your own life, fortunately. 
Mm. In this situation. Yeah, we have plenty of those holidays coming up. Yeah, so yeah. It's the precursor to those. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Freed not here this morning. She had to go over to Eastern Washington to attend to her her very ill mother. But uh, outside this door, and I'm not ready to bring her in just yet. But her show ready to debut tomorrow oh, evening. Wow. Did she make a big open for it? The Strip Prentice winner is going to come in and talk to us about what's going to happen on her show tomorrow night. Vinny the Pooh knows what's going to happen from his perspective on her show tomorrow night. He plans on being her very first caller. Uh, that's right. I'm actually working before her shift. Mm-hmm. We'll make sure the studio's all sort of good. Uh, right. right. I'm mm-hmm. sure that's nice. not watch yeah. me. Sabotage your board and everything. That's terrific. That's lovely. That's a way to welcome a new employee. Anyhow. Cut our headphones in half. That gives us a lot of time <laughs> for phone calls today. We've been taking phone calls all morning long, and I've been enjoying every second of it. Sonia, hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, um, is this T-Man? Yes. That's... Okay. I know you're talking about you're giving up for like relationship advice, and I wanted to know something from your perspective. Okay, I work with this guy, and I really like him a lot. And like, um, how I'm, old are you? I'm 20. Mm-hmm. What and kind of phone are you on? It's a house phone because my cell phone broke. Mm, it's a cordless. Huh? Cordless phone. Yeah, it is. Yes. This is how yeah. they all used to sound. Uh, they yeah. all just pull the cords out of their phone and say, "I got a cordless." <laughs> right. Go ahead. Way. Doesn't sound very good, but go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to know because his friend is my friend also, and right. His friend told me that in order to like, because he like. Are you following anything this girl say? A lot of likes. Mm-hmm, yeah. He can like he gives just... mixed signals. Okay. Yep. I wanted to know like, how do you? Just you don't. Thanks for the call. You're on the oh, air. Hello. I was ready to take a shot every time she said it. Hey, how you doing? Yes, I, I couldn't deal with it. I don't know why. Go ahead, yes. Hey, how you doing? What's up? I was, uh... I was... Oh, hang on, hang on a second. I got to the calls. I've been waiting a lot longer now. Uh... You're on the air. Hello. Hello? Yo. Yeah, hey, um... So the other night, I went out... My buddy called me up about 9.15. I'm sitting at home, not really doing anything. And uh, he's like, hey, let's go to uh, Rick's. Mm-hmm. And so, Rick's, the strip club. Hey, yes, I've heard of it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> at the burger joint? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, anyways, um, so I agreed to go because he, he owed me some money. He's like, yeah, I'll pay you the money. I, uh, right, that's where you collect money at Rick's. Mm-hmm. Work it off. <laughs> yeah. So... So I That's go where there. I pay all my debts. <laughs> when I when I left when I left, my roommate was not home, and he's been spending the night at his girlfriend's house quite a bit lately. So I didn't think he'd be home at all the whole night. So about ten forty five, my girlfriend is starting to call me, and uh, <clears throat> and about eleven o'clock, I call her back. And right? Like, hey. Are we getting to a point here anywhere? I don't know why. All of a sudden, this segment, I'm starting to get really bored with the calls. No, hang on. So what do you so, got, dude? So. She's like, she's like, where are you at? I said, hey, I was, I was just, you know, in the bathroom, you know, not thinking anyone was home. She's like, wait a minute, I just tried calling your house, and and your roommate said that uh, that you weren't there. Right. And so I totally lied to her. You know, after the fourteen year old caller, it's all downhill. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so I totally lied to her, and and she has some pretty strong opinions on guys going to strip clubs. And who's it? You lied to your girlfriend after you went to a strip club? Yeah. All right. So what's the big deal? So I'm trying to figure you're out. Not, you're not allowed to go to the, a strip club if you have a girlfriend. Well, you can't tell her point blank. I went to a strip club. Now what? She feels like, like you, you can't say to her, "I went to a strip club." What are you going to do uh, about it? What's that? You can't tell her I went to a strip club. You can't say to your girlfriend, "I went to a strip club." You're worried about her what? Getting mad at you? Yelling at you? What? Dude, this girl. Big pussy. <laughs> oh, the biggest. <laughs> what do we have here? Oh, yeah. Big pussy. What? She's got a strong opinion about strip clubs. So what? So do you. You have a strong opinion that you like to go to one from time to time. You're not married yet? You're allowed to go. That's Even if you weren't married, you're allowed to go. That's the way it is. End of story. And that's why I should say, but... She wants to go to a male strip club? You're not going to have a big... Uh, Break I'm, down over it. Oh, she you be. cannot tell that to this girl. Whatever. You can tell her if you're not a big pussy. Big pussy. All right. You you cannot tell that to this girl. <laughs> God, you sound scared. You sound scared right now. You're not even talking yeah. to your girlfriend right now. You, you, do, you don't understand. What will happen if you tell your girlfriend? What would happen if she found out you went to a strip club? So you so slyly were able to get out of it. Lucky you. What would happen if she found out? You're worried for your life? What are you worried about? 
Well, I mean, eventually, I, I did tell her, and, and she's not called me since. Thank heavens there are more guys out there that are able to take their girlfriends to strip clubs these days than there are guys like you who are afraid to death to tell their girlfriend they went to a strip club because they're a big person. Big pussy. Pussy. You, were, you were not listening, though. What did I, I miss? I, I, I did tell I, her. I really wasn't listening, so I may have missed I something. Else. Her, I think you were. And she's not called me since. Uh-huh. All right, so. Obviously, it's a kind of girl that maybe you'd be better off with some other guy. Because you like to go to strip clubs, or at least you did on this occasion. Yeah. So what's the big deal? Yep. You, you don't need to be with a girl who's going to freak out every second you want to go to a strip club for a couple of minutes. She probably knows you're a good guy. If she doesn't know who you are by now, and she's just all freaked out over the thought of a strip club, screw her. Move on with your life. Find someone who can be a little bit more of a relaxing situation for you. All right. All right? All right. Okay. Bye. Now he's being a big baby because well, he wants the girl back. Baby. Big baby. You need that girl back. Screw her. I mean, not that a girl should tolerate having a guy that just, just needs to go to the strip club every single night or something like that. Your guy wants to go to a strip club. You don't have... This is 2005. You don't have a big conniption. All right? End the story. If it bothers you a little bit, get over it. Plenty of women that have conniptions. I'm not so sure anymore that there are plenty of women. There are women that still have conniptions. They just tolerate it because they have been told... If they have a boyfriend who once every few some odd months wants to go to a strip club with a couple of friends, get a couple of laughs or whatever he may get out of it, maybe a little bit more hopefully, then deal with it. It's not the worst thing in the world. To them it is, and I don't know why. Well, if it's a big deal to them then uh, I'm not so sure that's the kind of girl you need to be getting all serious with. Because if there's a big deal on that, it's going to be a big deal on a lot of stuff. And I'm talking about the guy who's going to be relatively the good guy. All right? Okay, relatively? Relatively all the right. good guy. And that's well, what every woman is looking for these days. A guy who relatively is going to be a good guy. Wrapping the dollar bill around his beast? <laughs> is that good or bad? Once every few months. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> You're on the air. Hello. All right, let's go to Dustin. Dustin, you're on the air. How you doing, Z-Man? Name Dustin always stands out on the call board. Yes, Dustin. <laughs> I had uh, I had a question about, well, I'm actually engaged right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a question for you. Um, You're not the guy who called up to say that the 14 year old should be beaten at the stake that called earlier? No, for right. Skipping out on her parents, telling her she's going to a movie? Who's that guy? Where's that guy? He's the one on these phone lines? Go ahead. Uh, see you, Yeah, that's me. Oh, okay. Uh, no, but I had a quick question for you. Um, I'm getting engaged, and I wanted to uh, ask you advice about communication issues. Well, Steve, do you think the 14 year old should be beaten at the stake, beaten to a pulp because she's lying to her parents and going to a. Uh, not a, beaten, but a sixteen-year-old club. I wish, I wish we could have called her parents and told them what was going on. Why should we call her parents? Why should we rat her out? Oh, you tattletale, <laughs> man. Well, I mean, don't you think? Changed, wouldn't though. wouldn't parents want to know what's going on with their children? Well, that's their business. They should be on top of it to know what their fourteen-year-old's doing. If the fourteen-year-old is crafty enough to lie and have it be pulled over the eyes of the parents, that's their problem. And maybe they don't that ain't care. Ain't my problem. It's possible they don't care. I guess. Uh huh. You're just jealous because the only club you knew at 14 was the club sandwich. <laughs> yeah. And now. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Dustin. Go ahead. Oh, is it, it my turn? We tend to get sidetracked around here. Yes, it's your, your okay. turn now. No, no problem. Hey, look at that squirrel over there. 14-year-olds need to get beat every now and then. Oh. Yeah, right. Okay, good luck. What else? <laughs> um, but, uh, no, i um, got some communication issues with my fiancé. You're in an argument. Getting an argument about, I don't know, every 10, 15 minutes. You're engaged and you're scheduled to be married when, Dustin? Uh, next, uh... Who next gets month. to marry Dustin? Say again? When are you scheduled to be married? And to, uh, what lucky girl? Well, August 12th next year. August 12th of 06. You got a place yeah. set up? You got anything worked out? Uh, you got, any, got any checks uh, written? What's, what's yeah, the... Yeah, I got a, got a place set up. It's actually for free. Kind of been donated to us from a friend of a friend type of thing. Ah, it's, it's nice to have a free and, uh, place to get married. Uh, right. Uh, but I'm thinking let's just go to the Vegas thing, you know? Save mm -hmm. some cash. Mm-hmm. Go to Vegas and do that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. it seems like the more the more we talk about it and the more things go on, it just seems like the more arguments we get in. About well, you got all this time, Dustin. You're not set to get married until August of next year. And to be honest, 
Most girls wouldn't find the Vegas wedding the most romantic thing in the world. The only time a girl wants to get married in Vegas is if uh, she's worried the guy may change his mind and she wants to get married real quick and they go bing, bang, boom down to Vegas, walk through the uh, the drive through there, and uh, before they know it, they got a, a Biggie Fries and a marriage license. <laughs> Yeah. Which is better. Uh huh. The girls who want, who really desire to get married in Vegas, a little white trashy for my taste. But then again, I like all kinds of white trashy girls. But anyhow. What? All right? Or sometimes on a second or third marriage, women are more apt to be uh, interested in a Vegas marriage because they don't want a big should do anymore. They're embarrassed enough by the first one. So uh, that may be the reason. But this is this girl's first wedding, right? Yeah. This, yeah, this is both of our first weddings. Okay. Whoa. And you really well, want to get married in Vegas? No, I, it's not that I do. I mean, I wouldn't mind giving her that, you know, nice romantic... I'll be honest. I go to Vegas all the time. Everyone knows that. And I oh, yeah. feel I feel embarrassed enough for the people walking through the casino with their wedding dress on or with their tuxedos on. Yeah. I feel embarrassed for them. I can only imagine how they feel. They should be embarrassed. That looks so lame. See that woman walking by the roulette table with her wedding dress on? Awkward. You don't feel bad for her? Sure. Or playing at the roulette table. <laughs> yeah. She's got to get that last couple of spins in before she says, I do. If she could actually win some money, she won't have to go through with it. So, Dustin. Yes, sir. It's a little bit low rent is what I'm saying. In well, certain situations, giving, it's she's acceptable. She's giving me that, uh, that, uh, that option, too. She said, I can understand it from her point of view because it's a little bit low rent. This is her first marriage. She's marrying oh. a guy that I guess she kind of loves. That'd be you. Thank you, sir. For whatever reason, she sees the greatness in you, and she'd like to have some semblance of a wedding to remember. you got a free yeah. place here. Do you, do you blame that for it? Do you blame her for that? Oh, no, no, I don't, I don't blame her at all, and that's what I want to do. I want to give her that So why are you trying to ruin the one day that she actually has been looking forward to since the day she was a little girl? Hey, Can't I you give I her that, I Dustin? I not to ruin anything. Well, you would be ruining if you got married in Vegas and you're walking through in your stupid tuxedo through the, uh, <laughs> through the Aladdin. <laughs> no matter what kind of tux you had on, it'd be stupid. Oh, yeah. It's not really the kind of way you envisioned it when you were being tucked into bed at six years old by your by your mom telling you about Prince Charming, you walking by the slot machines in the Aladdin Hotel. Prince Charming have a corona in his pocket? So at least give her this. Give her something. Make an effort. Well, I, I am making an effort. I'm doing I'm doing everything I possibly can. Be happy can, that know. with the name Dustin she actually wants to marry you. <laughs> Dustin. But if you guys go to Reno, that'd be cool. <laughs> right. Laughlin would be nice. <laughs> Do you understand I'm getting to make it clear here that I'm a little bit on her side on this one? Oh, no, 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 yeah. It's, do it's do you love really this anybody's... woman? Do you love this woman, Dustin? Yes, sir. You really do? With all my heart. Okay. With that said, that you love her with all your heart, mm. could you at least now try to make an effort over the next number of months as we head to August of 06 to try to give her some semblance of the wedding she dreamed about? I will do it, that. You, you won't be able to come up with it. But if you make an effort... Well, and you know it would make it a lot easier. And try to get close to it. Dollars. At least she won't be able to begrudge you for that. She'll appreciate you. She'll always love you for that, that you did everything you could, and you weren't trying to shove Vegas down her throat. Well, I'm not. You know, that wasn't my option. Hey, I that love a good crazy. Vegas weekend as much as the next guy, but I'm not getting married there. And Vegas isn't really what it used to be, too, by the way. I mean, they have these you know, chapels, and it's still expensive. And it's still just like having a normal big wedding. <laughs> and August August twelfth, when it's one hundred and fifty six degrees outside, right. you guys are gonna. So what are you saying? You're you're in on the on the. Well, I'm saying it won't be any different than if he has a big wedding here. It'll still kind of be a big wedding down there too. It'll be it'll, it'll be it'll be the same thing. Is my point. It'll just be cheaper here. He has a free place. I, just having to have everyone in the casino look at you as you walk that, yeah. by in your tuxedo, and she walks by in her wedding dress is too much for me. As I said, there is a time and place for it. If it's your third wedding and you just want to just get it over with, it's a get it over with kind of wedding. You have till August that you were planning on this wedding. Give her something, Dustin. She's got a lifetime of smelling your number twos, dude. Give her the wedding you, she wants. Give her something. I'm doing. I'm doing everything I can. I mean, we no, you're you're throwing Vegas <laughs> at her. No, I'm not throwing. You're making you her want to cry before. every time you mention Vegas, Dustin. Oh no, no, no. See, you, this is the thing. Is it was her idea just to just to get. Just to get the whole thing taken care of and just go there and then come back and have a reception for our family. But just oh, she wants stop. Vegas. She was the one to give me the option before, and oh. I'm the one, But I, I'm the one that knows that she wants the the big wedding with her family and stuff like that. Because so you know what she would, wants better than she does. Well, mm. uh, and yes, she does. Want my, I, I understand what she's talking about when it comes to 
you know, doing the just getting the whole wedding stuff taken care of because you know it's a lot of work and stuff like that. But it's so it's I still going to be a lot of work when you come home and plan a reception for everybody. Well, yeah, but they don't, you don't know my family too much. I mean, basically, you get a keg and we're going to go. All right. Well, there's your August wedding. But then again, at the same time, I, I mean, I know that uh, you're she dreamed throat, of. Yeah, she's right. going to shove that down my throat and say, you know, hey, I, you know, what we should have just done this. How come, you know, you didn't want to? All do right. It? So, what's your question, know. Dustin? What's your question here? Stressful break up with her. Jesus. Well, I, I, I already, already kind of got my answer. I, I know you said to, you know, just give her the wedding type of thing. So that's you no. Know, I was just looking for some advice if I should just give in, like she said. But I know that her option that she gave me wasn't get married in Vegas. It was basically just to say, let's make it easier type of thing. Well, maybe you're getting cold feet. Maybe that's what she's sensing, and that's Ooh. why she wants to run down to Vegas before you uh, eventually back out on this thing. No, no, no. no that's I'm why, not. if she's offering Vegas, if she wants to get this over with, to me, that means she's a little bit worried about your ability to show oh, up to this no. thing. No, I'm not getting cold feet. She knows that. I'm not I'm not trying to get it over with. The only thing I'm trying to do is, is get this whole thing planned out without too many arguments and trying to make it happen before, you know, we argue so much to where we end up well, you're supposed to argue about the wedding and get you prepared for the marriage. That's what I'm <laughs> All right. That's right. That's exactly. So what if I'm you're saying. not able to handle the arguments about getting ready for the wedding, then you're not ready to get married because that's what oh, marriage yeah, is—a stream full of arguments over stupid stuff. No, yeah, and that's exactly what it is over. Dustin, too. I don't think oh. you're ready for this. It doesn't sound like it. Dustin, Dustin, the wedding's off. No, 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 sir, no, 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 no Dustin, better. listen to me carefully. You're my last hope. You, you need to, you need to believe in me. You're you not ready. I don't believe in you. I, I, that, that sucks. I, hate you. I believe in you, but you're not ready to get married, and the wedding's off. I'm, not, I'm ready to get married, but I want to give her the big wedding, and I want to do it without arguing, and I want to be able to, you know... Make you're not going to do it without out. arguing, all right? There's going to be some I, arguments, and uh, I, it doesn't sound like you've got a big wedding on the docket when you're thinking about the keg in a little free place. No, no, no. That, just, that was just joking around. Okay, so what do you got in mind? Well, what I got in mind... Paint the picture of the wedding, August 2006. Go ahead. I want to... Pretend I'm at the wedding right now. I've spent way too much time with you already, Dustin, so it's uh, no turning back I, I now. Tell me go. where I'm at. I'll let you go if you want. I, well, I got, I got nothing else to do, but anything I could do would be a lot better than this. But anyway, <laughs> Dustin, I'm at the wedding. It's 2006 in August, and what am I seeing? What have okay. you What have you prepared for us? Prepared. August 12th, uh, like out in the country and down in the Olympia area, and a uh, big landscape, probably about 250 to 350, depending on how many people show up. Um Nice, uh, so I'm looking at 300 country. some odd people in their Olympia best in a field. Okay, what next? Wow. And uh, we're going to do some uh, good country cooking. Uh, you know, like, you know. Just... So the place that your friend offered that's free is a barn? No, no, no. It's uh, she's, she's going to be, within this next year, she was planning on turning it into a place where people could actually get married. Uh -huh. So it'll be under construction yet. in August. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Yes, exactly. This Right. And uh, anyway, and then basically all of our family together. My dad is a carpenter kind of person, so he's going to build us our, you know, little, little podium, I guess you could say, or whatever, to uh -huh, uh, like a uh -huh, little archway. Uh -huh. You're married under, Make and then parents. he's he's also going to be the one that's going to marry us, also. Uh huh. Man, talk about and having then, everyone pitch in for this free wedding. Yeah, he's he's already got it planned out too. Yes. I mean, he was able to answer so all the questions. These are ideas. You told me to give you the idea. Well, I'm yeah, there. Yeah. I feel like I'm there. It's a nice wedding. What kind of food? It's a country cooking. Like country, country cooking, like country yeah. Cooking. Good. She loves southern food, so I want to give her a good good catered southern food. Type of stuff. Oh, like chicken and ribs and stuff like oh. that? No, no. Well, kind of. Like, you know, like, easy, though, right? Well, a little further south than Olympia. Love food. Okay. Soul food. <laughs> Anyhow. Soul, soul food. There it is, Dustin. It's ready. It's set. Now go. What? That's right. Exactly. Do we have to go? No, we're not going. Okay, good. <laughs> Oh, well, Stephen would love the chicken and ribs. Thank yeah, you, sounds good. Mm -hmm. The T-Man. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow evening on this here radio station, from 8 to 9 o'clock, she only wants to do an hour to get her feet wet, ladies and gentlemen, but it will be coming through your radios for the very first time in her three-month contract. The Strip Prentice winner debuts... On Saturday night, before Hot Mix. <laughs> uh -huh. And she's sitting right to my right at this moment. But let me ask Vinny the Pooh first. It's 9 o'clock. Hot Mix is about to begin. The Strip Prentice first show is in the history books. Okay. What kind of a show was it? How well did she do? Um, the worst ever. Worst Whoa. show Whoa. ever on Cube 93. Ever. 
You got to consider how bad some of the shows have been around here. No, Come there's on. been some bad shows. Never heard right. John Connor. You n obviously <laughs> never heard. I've heard DJ Matic. <laughs> uh, I've been on before too. Stephen oh. Kilbreth's Hangover Steven, Zone. I think Stephen's show would have been more and exciting saying, and interesting than this. Wow. Is not the way to pump up her confidence here, especially when she's got an ugly hat on this morning. What's with the ugly hat? Did your, gra did your that grandma knit that, that for you? What's hideous, the deal there? Hideous hat. I love my hat. It's oh, my. Hat. I got three and a half hours of sleep hat. Uh huh. You were working last night. Mm hmm. It's good. It's smart that you haven't given up your day job, if you. Right. It's smart that you are still dancing and that you are, uh, I'm sure you've made a lot of friends and enemies over the past week. I think more enemies than friends. That's how you get welcome to the business. The I more, like it. The more enemies you collect, the more you are becoming known around these parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really think Hot Shots a fat wildebeest? Uh, maybe, <laughs> but yeah. that's what his enemies call him. Ask the walrus or the dickhead. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's the typical thing when, you know, you start rising, everybody wants to hold you down. Oh, so. is that oh, what you've done oh, already? Rising. I'm rising. I'm rising. I'm rising. I thought that it. was me. Oh, hold me down. <laughs> yeah, big time superstar. And Vinny the Pooh I mean, trying to bolster her with confidence, saying President. that by the time her show is over, it will go down in history as the worst show ever in, in this radio station's, no, in, what, 20 years? In how broadcasting long is, history. How long has this radio station been on the air, Stephen? 24 years? 24 20. years? Whoa. And in 24 years, it'll go down as the worst show ever. Dollar Bill Jill, worst show ever. He's <laughs> wow. calling Dollar Bill Jill. You know why he hates yeah. you? Why does he hate me? Well, so you, you don't know? No, I don't know. He wants the show. I know, I know. Yes, I knew, knew that, that much. Okay, and he's expecting, <laughs> so you know. he's expecting you to fall flat on your dollar bill, Jill Face, <laughs> so that after three months, when your contract is complete, you will not be renewed, and it'll be the Vinnie the Pooh to the Boo show. <laughs> you said nude. Mm-hmm. But I expect That's the right. dollar bill, Jill yeah. show will be a must listen. I'm ready. It'll become a Saturday staple. It's going to blow away the people getting ready, headed to the clubs, <laughs> getting ready for their Halloween pre-funk. I'm going to stay up times. I'm going to stay up late and listen Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Steven is going to stay up late at 8 o'clock in the Woo. evening, and he's going to listen to your show. Now, i got to remember to listen to our show tomorrow night. Yeah, I need to, too. I said I'd be a guest on your show, but I was lying. <laughs> this is about as much as a guest as I'll be on your show. But you'll have a nice first show without me, and uh, you will, I'm sure, do some things. Right? Yeah, we're going to do a lot of things. Okay, let's say it's the first segment of your show tomorrow night. Give me a preview of what am I going to be hearing. The first couple of minutes, you sign on, you tell everyone what. Well, I'm going to, you know, do my uh, my little thing. She my already sounds boring. Do your oh, thing. Are you going to call your show Dollar Bill Jill or no? No, um, I'm going by the uh, air name Lexi, the uh, Why Lexi? naughty girl next door. Oh, jeez. I like it. It's, you know, like it sounds it sexy. Like it's yeah, kind of yeah, fresh yeah, and young. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, going with that one. Sexy Lexi. That and Super Sam was screaming, kill Jill at me across mm -hmm. the studio on Eric's show. So. Well, you've got to figure out what he means by that. <laughs> Anyhow, and actually, <laughs> some, yeah, some text it. pages are writing in. Is your last name Reamed? No <laughs> reams. Oh, they were reamed. I was thinking. Well, well, reams know. isn't much better. <laughs> is your middle name gets. <laughs> you get reamed. Not lately. Oh, anyways, so you're not you're not sexually active at this time. Is what you're alluding oh, to. Oh, you wear hats. Or are there. you? <laughs> no, not enough. Because it's those hats. It's those that hats. Wearing. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. So three and a half hours of sleep. I mean, honestly, if you had worn that hat on finals morning, you may not be sitting here right now talking about your show tomorrow <laughs> night. But honestly, I don't think it came down to looks anyway. No. Not that you're not a good-looking girl. Anyone who saw you on the front page of the T Man Show dot com no. saw that you have the looks to back up. Up, uh, the fact that you are the winner of Strip Prentice. Mm -hmm. well, you used to dance at Rick's. Now you dance at Deja Vu? Right. When you danced at Rick's, because Rick's is obviously known for some of the extracurricular functions, if you will. <laughs> some of the, uh, right. the little happy endings that they'll put <laughs> on your dance there, if you will. <laughs> Were you one of those dancers that was willing to do the go the extra mile route as some of the dancers did in the past and may still do today or no? You know, no, I wasn't. Never did. And that's probably the reason that I work now at the VU. So, because mm -hmm. you had back. to get out of that scene. Yeah, it wasn't really for uh, me. That's no way. A little too much to be with. Glad we didn't ask that question at the finals. Yeah, me hey, too. <laughs> what if you had to make rent, though? Let's say it was like last week Not of the worth month. It. How to make? Oh, come on! If I had to make rent, I'd no be way. Come on, eat, eat. There's a there's a line, you know. I have self respect, and yeah. you know, right. as, as much as there's you can after <laughs> being a dancer, you know, like there's a lot of self respect in paying your rent. You have to two hundred bucks for a rent. I'm tugging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to tug. You got to tug. You wouldn't tug. I wouldn't do it. No tug. No wow. Way. 
Hey, the Pooh, if this was a show right now, tell me you're not glued yeah. to the radio, listening to everything going on yeah. in the well, Lexi you, show. You got to think, if you take away that, you know, by herself, she's going to suck, dude. Well, she's going to have callers. She's going to take calls tomorrow be, night. She's been crying yeah, in her calls. ugly hat all night. So <laughs> anyone wants to call our new co-worker, anyone wants to call the Strip Prentice winner on her first show, they know the number. Mm -hmm. It's not the 800 number that do, you call in you, on here. Do you know the number? I do. What's, do you know the other number? I do. What's the other number? 877-933-9393. You just learned that? That one? She's yeah. safe. She's she been just, trained, man. She oh, just needed she to safe. learn it. She didn't need to know that two weeks ago. She knows it now. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I know it. You I'm just making sure there's... Just be prepared that your first caller is going to be waiting for a couple of hours before you even get into the studio. <laughs> it's going to be Vinny the Pooh, and he's going to try to sabotage your show. Now, if you can handle that, what are you doing? Why do you have to pull up your pants like that? Because my butt crack is hanging out. Oh. How do you fit in around here? Wow! <laughs> You're like a real radio person now. <laughs> mm-hmm. First segment of your show, you're doing what? After you do the big intro, the big Lexi. You going by Lexi, you sure? Lexi, I'm sure. Okay, if you do your intro, welcome to my new show. What are you doing then? I think we're going to do some cocktail call-ins. You know, everybody that's oh, having cocktail. a party can... <laughs> cocktail. Can, oh, just can call in can and share their Saturday evening... Right, say where they're at, kind of give shout-outs, whatever. We want to get. We want people to be, you know, hyped up. And yeah. Why are you shaking your head now, Benny the Pooh? Why, why are you... It's ridiculous. Like, I don't think you're realizing. <laughs> you won't, there's always so many, like, opportunities you have to talk and you're going to try to smash all these corny ideas and your little why are you calling them corny why like can't it. you just give I it a chance you, I kind of like the you're idea great. I want to hear the cocktail I think call it's cool man people yeah, at their houses. it's interesting Saturday night different. people at their houses little get togethers going on they're going to call in with their cocktails and uh, they're going to tell us what's going on and all it's right. like I'll play run it then I'll play gold digger and then I'll play and Lexi's going to be on the receiving end of those calls making it happen. What's wrong with that? What are you doing? Let's say it's your show. First hour. First segment. What are you doing? I'll play more mu more different music. Nobody wants to hear people talk. Yeah, but it's right before <laughs> Hot Mix. I think they want to hear her talk. <laughs> I think on Saturday <laughs> night they want to hear her talk. <laughs> I'm glad after 10 years of success, I finally know that uh, right. no one wants well, to hear... morning show is different. Music's the answer. I think morning show, yes, is different as far as people wanting to hear talk. And I also think on a Saturday night, you have someone like Lexi in there, you're going to want to hear talk. Yeah, she agree. wants to talk. She has the right to play all the music she wants. But if she wants to talk, I think a lot of people want to hear it. Yeah, the difference is I would not want to hear Vinny talk oh. <laughs> at that time. People want to feel dialed in. They want to know what's going on, where to party at. Come right. on. Is that what you're going to bring them, Lexi? Yeah. You're going to bring them... The bring feeling. them the ruckus, no, oh, the party. You're gonna bring them the feet. You're gonna bring them the feeling like they know what's going on when right. they're sitting home doing nothing, or when they they're getting ready to go out. They're gonna feel like they're part of a big party. Right, and we'll everybody like wants to know where it's at, so you know. Okay. Living in Lacey, and some we'll guy calls and says he's having a party. Maybe, maybe you can go. Right, there you go. Living in Duval, it'll feel like you're in the big city. Hey, yeah. I grew up in Duval. Wow, Stephen, you could have been neighbors. Wow. Anyway. So, Stephen's listening tomorrow night. He hears about some big party in Duval. Oh. Somebody called in during your cocktail call-outs. He can get in his little uh, Volvo and head over there. There you go. Peeping Tom. <laughs> yeah. Stephen. It's exciting. I think this show is a long time coming. It sounds interesting I to me. I think this show from Lexi has been long overdue. I think it's cool. I, don't know I she think use this, her real name. I think this show, Vinny the Pooh, it's going to be the highest rated show in the history of the radio station. I think people are listening to it for the first one to hear what she sounds like and never, never come her, back. Never. So she's going to get blazing ratings, kind of like the XFL. <laughs> That's right. Everybody yeah. watched the first game. Everyone watched the first game and no one watched the second. Not a second. Season. Lexi, there are going to be a lot of people in this industry that are going to try to tear you down, just like the people that are uh, out there that have been kind of haters to you this week. Right. you got to have thick skin in this business. I can handle it. Is your skin thick, baby? It is. As thick as this? Oh, oh. <laughs> thick as my love handles? <laughs> wow. I can't wait to forget that it's on this weekend. That sounds great. That's right. <laughs> I, I can pretty much guarantee you. Right. It'll be like Sunday morning. I'll be like, oh, oh. damn, I forgot the Lexi show. I mean, if people if people in this room are already forgetting that her show is going to be on. Well, you never know. <laughs> Maybe we'll remember. Someone will have to call me. Anyway, Steven, you don't like the fact she's changing her name? Oh, I like I like Jill. I don't know why she doesn't use that. But mm -hmm. I guess she can do whatever she wants. Dollar she doesn't want to be called Dollar hit. Bill Jill, maybe. <laughs> that, that might be one reason. It's going to stick. All right, let me go to the oh, phones. Oh, let me go to the phones She's and like see what the feeling... Cool. Not that this isn't set in stone. Obviously, it is. The contract is signed. I just want to see what the listeners, the vibe is on the Lexi Saturday night cocktail call-in hour. Well, that is just be the first segment, the cocktail call. Right. What's the show called? Do we know yet? Do we have a name for the show? We don't have a name. But it's a work Anybody in progress. Anybody have any ideas? Oh, jeez. Throw them like ten. There. You're on the air. Hello? Hello? Jamal, yes. 
Yeah, I just want to compliment Lexi. She, I think she's going to do a good job. Thank you. And you're prepared to listen between 8 and 9 tomorrow night to the brand new radio program that uh, has been brought to you courtesy of this here show on Cube 93? Mm. Yes, I am. I'm awesome. This. You already got a listener, Lexi. I do. You have one got a listener. Fan. Awesome. And you got a fan, too, not just a listener. Oh, woohoo, my first fan. Your first fan. Thanks, Jamal. Oh, jeez. You're welcome. Uh huh. <laughs> Jamba Juice. Now, what does he get as a member of your fan club? <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, yet to be seen. Wow. Yeah. Want to meet later? <laughs> Want to do it? Uh, who is next? Akisha, hello. Hello. Hi, T-Man. How are you? Good. Hey, I was calling about the Vegas wedding. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to take calls on Lexi's show, but go ahead. Yes, real quick. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know. I've been mm -hmm. on the phone for a while. Anyways, I got married in Vegas, and it sucked. Oh. It was horrible. It was horrible. Okay. Yeah, at Treasure Island. Mm, got to walk and, by um, those pirates in your wedding dress. A little awkward, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, you know, they made a videotape, and they had pirates at the end of the videotape. Mm -hmm. But I was embarrassed walking through the casino with my wedding party. That's wedding what I'm dress. thinking. It was... I, I feel embarrassed for those people. You got to be embarrassed. Yeah, it was... You know, I didn't know what's going to be but Everyone turns, they look, they're at the... You know, playing the slot machines and mm -hmm. everyone looks and... Oh, Just God, not horrible. necessary. Lexi, make sure you pick up on this discussion later on your show. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, I'll see you at the bar. You don't need that a hundred times. <laughs> really. I mean, that's got to get old. You've made it. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Well, Hi. What's up? How are you? All right. Good. What do you got? <laughs> Tell me you need to quit Hayden. Wow. Thank you. You're going to do just fine. <laughs> Thank you, baby. How do you know that, though? Because she is. I mean, that's one of the interesting things. Well, you chose her team in. I so doesn't mean I had, like, this unbelievable pool of talent to choose from. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you and say that. But Lexi stood out, or Jill stood out, whoever she is. as the one that I and a lot of the judges thought would have the best show, I guess. I can't remember how the judging goes. I think you made the right decision. I think we let Delilah choose. Now, if Delilah screwed us over by having a show that just stinks up the joint, <laughs> well, she's going to have to be reprimanded, Terry. Terry, where's Terry? Actually, not even here. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Mm -hmm. I'll just do it if you want me to. That's cool. I know we look a lot alike. <laughs> Justin, hello. Hey, what's going on, T? What's up? Hey, I just wanted to tell Vinny to pull up his skirt and quit being a little bitch. Oh! <laughs> he needs to quit hating and start congratulating. Uh huh. Wow, Jill, you go ahead and do your thing. And that is the hot. point, Vinny the Pooh, because whether you congratulate or hate, it's not going to make a difference on how a show ultimately not turns out. I'm, really? I'm, I'm making just... sure it's clear. I'm not saying a show is going to blow the doors off anything. I'm not saying it's going to suck. I'm going to listen. And wait and see. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter if it if it's if it's cool or if it flops. I just. I mean, they're not gonna like resign you, so I'm gonna just be right. I'm gonna just be right there as soon as you go out. I'm gonna go right in, so I'm not really. What tripping. if they check the ratings? We'll see what happens. There'll be ratings on her show, Vinny the Pooh. What if they check the ratings in three months and they're like a fifteen point three? I, oh. I swear, I'll, I'll quit. I'll go work. At a blockbuster somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the next move from radio. I'm glad yeah, you recognize that. Make more money. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Better benefits. <laughs> You're on the air. Hello. 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 Yes. Yeah, I, I was wondering. Jill's not going to be giving any medical advice, will she? Oh. No, I'm not qualified for that. If I skin my knee tomorrow night, can I call and ask on uh, best way to suture it or no? <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> no, you might want to hang up and dial 911 for mm -hmm. that. Well, that's good advice right there. Wow. What about relationship advice if somebody has uh, some situations going on? I mean, Saturday night, you could be dealing with a relationship problem in progress. Right. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. If you, you have problems, be up, you can go ahead and call up. I would be more than happy to give anybody you advice. You could be breaking up domestic abuse situations in full <laughs> swing, if you Wouldn't will. Wouldn't be the first time. My boyfriend's dating a stripper bitch. Like, <laughs> I hate her. She's such a whore. Oh, Those strippers. Boy. Aaron, hello. Hello. What's up? Lexi, is um, is she ready to bring any uh, guests down to the studio? Maybe do a few interviews or sex over glass. <laughs> you want to come down? Uh, yeah, if you you know if you want to take some guests, maybe you do a couple interviews or whatnot. I don't know. Uh -huh. So, what makes you so interesting that I should interview you? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I don't know. It's come down and maybe you can meet me and we could see what's yeah. going on. I mean, I'm an interesting <laughs> You'll see firsthand that there's nothing. 
All right. Is she giving Either. anything away on the show? Oh. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm still kind of in talks with the with what we can what we can give away, but certainly. You're in talks uh, with who? The promotion director around with here? Eric. Really? With yeah. Eric Flowers? Yeah. You have you have meetings with him every day? Mm -hmm. Every day. Hey, Alexa, we're going to need to meet again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm just not quite feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> Make it high. Yeah. So come over no. 10 p.m. That's right. when the meeting is. Give, give this away. <laughs> Maybe we can give away Dirty Harry's mole. Mm -hmm. Chop it off. But you can't put that in an envelope. <laughs> too big. <laughs> yeah. The potion is too expensive, so they have to come down and get it. Star's mom. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi. Star's mom. Hi. <laughs> I, I think this is fine. They can't... Uh, we need the poor stop whining. He getting more worse and worse and then sick of hearing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vanilla Poe needs to stop whining because she's going to be buying. Is, is, that what well, it, is that what she said? That's what she said, and you better start accepting it or at least holding off judgment until her first show is in the books. And then you could say, even if the first show turns out to be a clunker, you could say, hey, she's new, she had no real training, she's got to feel her way through this. Oh. you got to give her about three, four, five shows to make a decision. Yeah. No. I already know what the deal is. Stars Mom, do you have plans tomorrow evening to sit by the radio and listen to Lexi's I'm gonna show? Be listening. I'm going to listening. Hey, there's two listeners. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! You're going to have a hell of a lot more than two listeners. But the fact that Stars Mom is in bodes well for you. If you got them ranging up to like 45 year old, 50 year old women, yeah. that's awesome. That is a nice audience for you, Lexi. I like it. Don't you think? <laughs> wow. Now, what kind of things do you want to hear, Stars Mom, from the Strip Prentice winner tomorrow night? What are you looking for? Do you have any requests as far as what you should do on her show? Oh, I like her ideas. And let me let me listen in the person's show, and then maybe something come up, and then I can call. Mm-hmm. Wait to hear her liquored up tomorrow night calling in. <laughs> oh. Well, I love it, Stars Mom. Mom. If you want to call in, you call me. You think it's hard to understand her now? <laughs> oh, yeah. She's got a few in her tomorrow night. Actually, goes the other way. Yeah. Mm. Hello, this is Stars Mom. Completely <laughs> clear. <laughs> Hi, I am Stars Mom. <laughs> no, I'm not going to call. I love know. your show. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, I went and you guys do uh, the things, the program, and I thought you should probably won. I like the uh, beginning time. So, mm -hmm. so you, you were rooting for Jill the whole way. Yeah. There it is. Awesome. Stars mob knows town a mile away. I love it. Okay, but she lives 40 miles away. So. Uh, yes, Sean, hello. Yeah, man, I, um... I just wanted to call in and say, I'm not feeling it, man. You know what I mean? Jill, I mean, it sounds like you're going to be kind of corny. Oh, he's worried it's your show's going to be corny. All right, I mean, well, why don't you just listen tomorrow and we'll find out. Mm -hmm. huh? I mean, I, 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 it's not something I would even want to listen to. I mean, honestly, I mean... You so you're not like, even going to give her a chance. You're not even going to sample her, as we say in the trade. Yeah, basically, I mean, basically, it's like this, man. I mean, I mean, cocktail call-ins, and I mean, come on, who's really listening to that? Okay. For real. Are you, just, are you suggesting that maybe overall you have a bad feeling about a stripper getting a show on a radio station? At, no, 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 not at all. You, you had guys, no problem I mean, with that. And no, not at all, man. It, it's not. It, it's not the fact that you know she's a stripper and all that. I mean, that's cool. But I mean, I've seen way better looking strippers. I mean, I went to your your website and I was kind of disappointed, man. I well, was, some people I, did write in; they were disappointed. A lot of guys wrote in that they were pleasantly surprised with how good uh, Lexi Jill looked. So you're gonna have him from all walks of life, sure. Sure. Everybody sure she has shows their up. own opinion. She shows up at his house. Uh, and says, she's, Get out of here. she's kind of plain. Right. You, know, you gotta admit, she's kind of plain. Kind of plain I mean? looking or plain. sounding. No. Plain I mean, looking. Been, I mean, for real. I mean, I, I, it was way looking more better looking strippers. Plain than looking, you say. Did um, you, all right. Yeah, did she you, was plain looking, man. But I mean, I'm just trying to tell you. I mean, if you're gonna have a show, man. Did you sure see some like, of the other? Did Sean? Did you see some of the other finalists on the pictures inside the website? Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, you thought they were yeah. better candidates or no? Way better. All right, well, I'll tell you this. We didn't choose based on looks. Not that no. I didn't think Lexi, Jill, or whatever was not one of the best, was one of the best. It didn't matter. Showgirl of the Year. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Why don't you have it's Sean? Not even about the looks, man. Come up with some better ideas, and you only got a, a short. Make your, so what are here. your ideas here, that make, are so great? Uh, here's here's what your second segment should be. Show up at Sean's house naked and see if he just tosses you out. <laughs> yeah, he will. Right, why don't you have That's Sean great. send a picture of his girlfriend down, and we'll compare them. Oh. I'm sure she's way hotter than you. Or if you can't find mm. Sean's house, go to D-Man's house. Oh. I put it like this: if she's gonna show up at my house naked. She better have a better looking friend with her. Oh, oh boy. Because sure. you are. Telling her to get the hell out. As long as the friend's name's Carl. Uh, I'm not a hater. <laughs> yeah, isn't that John John's boyfriend on the line right there? Oh. Wow. See, she's good. Good solid line right there. Well, you should save that for tomorrow night. Be a ratings bonanza. Now she's out of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you're fresh out of lines. Yep. Party's over. Yeah, tomorrow's show's been canceled. Hour of cocktail Collins.
All right, so it's cocktail call in segment one. Right. Do you have a segment two, three, and four plan? Or are you just and winging we're it. We're doing the dirty, dirty at eight thirty. Oh, jeez, I don't know what the dirty, dirty at eight thirty is, but I got to tune in for that. Call up and. Uh, I don't even want to know. Yeah, there it you may, go. May ruin it for me. That's tune in. <laughs> the dirty, dirty at eight thirty. Oh, like that's it. pretty good. Me the pool. You doing the dirty, dirty? That's creative. Man, you can't. I'm stealing it. I'm starting to do the. Wait, wait. Man, like. Oh, I don't <laughs> know. Okay, she, 930, <laughs> fine. She the dirty, she dirty, dirty 930. 922. She ain't realizing what? So, okay. Like, you know how this show's broke down in segments? There's no segments in, like, normal she programming. She can make it however she wants. It's her show. She can make it however she wants, and then she went, you know, she's going to get going. It's going to be like 8.50. Oh, oh i got to get off there. Uh, stay, stay she can play week. a song. If she starts to feel like so, she's getting tired in a certain segment. Right. I'm just saying, okay. Just she's not. She doesn't have to follow the regular format. She, she can do with that hour as she pleases. If she, if she it's doesn't the have to Lexi follow, show. If she doesn't have to follow the regular format, I'm gonna be more mad because they're gonna. No, she doesn't have to follow the regular format. It's her show, and she doesn't have to follow the typical songs that need to be played by a regular DJ. This is her show. Yeah, she's got something to say. We want to hear it. Oh, you're gonna be mad? Like you're not mad already? No, I'm gonna be more <laughs> mad because that's, that's because cool. Eric normally tells them they can only say like 15 seconds. Well, worth that's of stuff. not the case in this hour's no. worth of uh, programming on Cube 93 tomorrow night. Lexica and I've made it clear from the beginning she can play as much music, no music, all music, whatever she decides. Nice. Dirty, dirty, it ain't dirty. Hell yeah. But if I can't wait, I start doing the dirty, dirty at seven thirty. Is that all right with you? <laughs> Fine, just save a little for later. Mm, you know I will. <laughs> the T Man. Power, power. The uh, text pagers are writing in in full Good force time. right now. Oh, just <laughs> wow. What's that? What was that? Was that on the air, Steven? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, was that the song? Anyway. Uh, some people are very much looking forward to your show here. Jill. Awesome. Yes. And others can't wait to rip it down. <laughs> Vinny the Pooh. Oh, geez. Well, it's not just Vinny the Pooh. You're going to have your uh, non-fans out there. you got to be aware right. of that and not blame them all on Vinny the Pooh. Somebody writes, uh, three thumbs up for Dollar Bill Jill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. A lot of uh, emailers writing or text pages writing about the $5,000 gift card giveaway. Yeah. Did you hear about that after we ended Strip Prentice? I did. We are giving away not just to those that have been strippers, but to anyone out there. We'll start that in full force next week, meeting people that need to be qualified to be in line for the $5,000 gift card. So a lot of text pages about that. Anybody? Um, Vinny the Poos needs to stop sounding like a little puss. Tell him to grow the F up and get a man's voice. He sounds like a whiny bitch. <laughs> Maybe that's why Eric Flowers hasn't given him his own shoe. Mm. Mm -hmm. As we speak right now, people are so excited about your, your show there, Lexi. I'm so excited. In the promotion studio, I don't know if you're aware of this, you probably aren't. Our promotion director, the guy who puts together all the promos, Robbie, is he on the line? What is he, on the phone line? Yeah, just call him. Well, can we put him up, like, through his... Studio, yeah. Let's put up a studio. He's working on your open right now. I'm so excited. You're going to have an open. I know. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Our open has been the same one for about seven years. <laughs> we have one? I, do we have, I don't know. I'm oh, usually okay. driving in at that point. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let me see if I can find Robbie. Hang on. Robbie, is this you? You won't be able to talk to him, but you can hear what he's working on through his board. He can't hear you. He's on seven if you want to talk to him. Robbie? Who's this? This is Kendall. Oh, you? hey, Kendall, She's hang not on. not making anything. Okay. <laughs> All right, hang on, baby. What line? All right. Robbie. Yo. You working on her open right now? Yeah, I got it, I got it all done. You and a lot of other guys. All right, so you, you're working <laughs> on her show open. Okay, and what kind of show open are you putting together for her, Robbie? It's, uh, it's very uh, strip club. Uh, it gets you to feel like you're in a strip club. Well, she <laughs> made it clear to us when she won and she signed on the dotted line that she would like to venture away from the strip club lifestyle that she had uh, been living off and on for the past number of years. And she would like to take a new avenue in life and remove herself from the stripper world. But I can see where you're going with that. So anyway, <laughs> what, what, got? what kind of open might we be hearing tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, leading into Hot Mix on the brand new show? Show by the strip rent this winter on Cube 93. All right, no. Should I hit it right now? <laughs> well, why don't you play the promo and then you can work on that? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here I go. Mm hmm. 
That was great. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get up and welcome sexy 2005 Super Prentice winner, Lexi. Boy, does she look good. She'll be available for couch dances and those would be Texas style as soon as she's off the stage. They're $20. We have an ATM machine right in the back of the corner of the club. Drinks, if you want to buy her drink, they're only $15 on your ATM card or cold hard cash. And now, the winner of Cube 93 Strip Ennis. Sexy! Up on stage. Oh, Robbie. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you can really come up with a worse sounding open. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> it's not really about stripping per se, and it's having that guy voice it that we know and Was love. Was that Dirty Harry? <laughs> yeah, it's totally Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry, Harry wants to be a part of your show as much as possible. He begged to be your producer. No, I Call said no way. The apple train. He begged to be your producer. He was told that he couldn't. We uh, settled on Pasty Dave as your producer. Pasty right. Dave will be producing her show tomorrow night. She gets a professional producer so she can do the best job she possibly can. Uh, Robbie. Yeah. Oh my God. Scratch that whole theme, everything Please. you everything you had as far as what was on the blueprint for her open, and go in a completely different direction. Back it's, to it the sounds board. hideous. Oh my God! <laughs> Couldn't have made it sound worse. <laughs> and I like you. you usually do you good have, work. Like, everything you does sugar is good. On me or you, you usually do good work. Everything you've done up to this point has been good. <laughs> this is so back to the drawing board. Completely different. I don't like it. I don't approve of it. I think it's horrible. Okay. All right? Well, we'll go back to the drawing board. Unless you disagree, Lexi. No, I don't disagree. You with hate it? Man. I hate it. All right. She hates it. I think it's pretty lame. <laughs> and I want you back on the drawing board. Okay. Okay. See ya. Thank you so much. Bye. See ya. There he goes. None of us will tune in and know if it's different or not. Man. <laughs> Including Robbie. Yep. Sure, I'll change it. Here it is. Uh -huh. He's plugging it into cart number right now. Uh, Lexi slash Jill slash whoever the hell you are. Mm -hmm. Good luck tomorrow night on your own show. Mm -hmm. well, thanks for having me. Keep in mind that as good as a show you do tomorrow night, the more listeners you're going to have next time around. That's the way mm -hmm. it works in the biz. I love it. All right. You ready for it? I'm ready. You've been waiting for this your whole life? I have. There it is. There you go. Okay. She's like Rudy. Mm -hmm. oh. Running through the tunnel. I've been ready for this my whole life. Okay. Maybe you'll be carried out of the I studio on I people's can. shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you. Turn thanks for dropping by. Way. Thank you for having me. Mm, thanks for being head. Okay, mm. her show begins tomorrow night. We'll all be listening. Yeah. Right. The T-Man.